Check. Okay, uh, everyone. So, uh, good morning and welcome to the KO SPF H workshop 2016. So, actually, this is the second workshop. We had the workshop, uh, the first last year, and we are very happy now that the team from KU University are now back uh, again to uh, give us many knowledge and experience. So let's hope today our workshop uh, will be very great for us. So now I officially open the workshop of the first day. So before I introduce uh, all the team of the KO member, uh, let's have some official uh, opening speech. I would like to present, uh, please, uh, Professor Utomo to, get, uh, to give the speech of our opening remark. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Professor uh, Makoto Yoki uh, from Antolets, yeah, Antolets from Keio University Graduate School of System Design and Management. Uh, thank you very much for visiting us. In Bandung. I think that's the third time, yeah? okay. third time you visit us in Bandung. Yeah? So, <clears throat> we very thanks and for providing us workshops. Uh, workshops in system design, system uh, design and system thinking. Yeah? Design and system thinking. So I think some of you are really familiar with system thinking, especially from student in MSM, yeah, Master of Science Management, and I think from MBA, not so familiar, I think, yeah, with system thinking, also from undergrad, maybe not so familiar with system thinking. But some of students from undergrad uh, already got uh, design thinking, so it's a complementary thing. Okay, uh, in my opinion, design and system thinking is uh, very important for you. Yes, I encourage you to participate actively today. Uh, why? The question is why design and system thinking is very important for SPM students. Why? Ada yang bertanya? Are you curious? <laughs> if you're curious, I will uh, explain soft. Yeah? It will be given in detail by Professor Makoto and colleagues from KU. You know, the learning process in SPM is designed yeah, to develop innovative leaders. Yeah? You understand? Innovative leaders with entrepreneurial mindset. Yeah. So, leader, innovative leader. Yeah, innovative leader. So our mission is one of uh, aspect of our mission is to develop innovative leader with entrepreneurial mindset. So to be leader, yeah, leader. So the keyword is leader. You have uh, to be a good decision maker and problem solver. Yeah, problem solver. So to be a good problem solver. Yeah. To be a good problem solver, you should see the problem systematically. Not systematically is different, yeah. Systematically and systematically is different. Systematically, you have to see the problem as a system with system thinking. But systematically, systematic, systematic, yeah, systematically, you follow a procedure step by step. Process, yeah. different. So that's why system thinking and design design thinking is is uh, apa, very important for problem solving. Problem solving, yeah. Especially for MBA student, yeah. You are uh, trained for a good problem solver and decision maker. 
So, uh, what is Eastern Technique? It will be explained in detail by <laughs> Professor Makutu and Tulis. <laughs> yeah. But I will give you a short to compare, yeah, to understand system thinking, we have to compare contrast with analytical thinking. Yeah. It's different. Analytical thinking is like just divide and counter, memecah benda dan memecahkan. Divide and counter approach to see the problem, to divide the problem into small parts, and then solve the small parts spiritually. Ignore the relationship among the parts. But system thinking, you focus on relationship among the parts. That is complementary between analytical thinking and system thinking. So, you focus on relationships. Yeah? So, the holistic approach is important here. And then, why system thinking important for business? <laughs> So this, this question must have to be curious, yeah? To attend this workshop, you have to have some hypothesis in your, in your mind. Why are you interested here? Business? What is business? Business is creating profit is a kind of value, yeah? Value is not only profit, but also social value. Value is the result of relationship <laughs> among the Part. So value is relationship, emotional property of the part. So business, so as business uh, student, you have to understand how to create value by design the relationship among the parts. Yeah. The parts. Not only focusing on parts, but you focus on relationship among the parts. Illustration. Yeah, for example, if you create value, social value, how to reduce traffic jam in Bandung? Uh, or in Jakarta? In Bandung, especially in weekend. People from Jakarta coming to Bandung to enjoy culinary, to enjoy tourism in Bandung, to buy fashion, yeah, factory of life. You should this problem in system, okay? You take the system of cars, motorcycle, road infrastructure, and people behavior and culture. Not only the technical part, cars, photo, photo bike, yeah, but also people behavior and in driving, for example. Yeah, and culture, law of transportation, etc. So in short, in short, finally, yeah, I encourage you to participate actively to this workshop because as I explained before, it's very important for you. Yeah. Participate seriously and actively. Ask yeah, if you have misunderstanding, you have some unclear definition, explanation, please raise your hand and ask. And participate. In many games, yeah. You will have many games for today's yeah, today's workshop. And Professor Makoto and College, we hope that you are enjoying your stay in Bandung. I think you, you will be back on Sunday. Sunday is too short, yeah? Please come later. Yeah. Minimum one week. <laughs> to enjoy on-site, yeah? On-site in Northern Bandung, we have on-site. Yeah, on-site. Uh, about spring, spring water. Near Tangkuban Perahu. Uh, volcanoes, yeah. we have volcanoes, many volcanoes, yeah. and hope, yeah, we hope to have more fruitful collaboration in the future. So thank you very much, uh, guys, yeah, please enjoy and thank you very much for this. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for Mr. Lutomo. Uh, and now, I think now is the time uh, for a uh, team from KO member to introduce themselves. <clears throat> and right now, yeah, we will officially start the workshop from the KO team member. Please give applause to Professor Koyo.
Good morning, everybody. So thank you very much, Professor Tomo. I am also very inspired by your presentation. Comment. Thank you very much. And I am very much confident that his presentation about entrepreneurship or innovation is very close to our philosophy, our basic idea regarding entrepreneurship and design thinking or system thinking. So I'm very confident that we are teaching in Keiwa University in Japan and their faculty members are teaching in this IDP. It's very common. Okay? So please accept this internationally shared idea. This is very important for you. So again, I would like to tell you the same comment. Please enjoy today's workshop and also tomorrow. So but as a study, this is the last time I visit here. First visit is January of last year. Maybe more than 40 participants participated in our workshop. And the second visit is February, just one year ago, one year ago. Also the almost 30 students participated. And here, Yalanga was selected as a representative of ITB and also in Messi. Thank you for coming, Yalanga. And today and this year, this is your turn. Okay? This is a past. And starting from today is the current situation. So pre again, please enjoy today's workshop. And <coughs> Purpose of the visit, oh, before my presentation, I will give you the PDF version of this presentation. So you don't have to copy anything. If you want, you can make memos of our lecture, but you don't have to copy on the screen. I will give you the PDF after the workshop. Okay. And first of all, so we would like to host workshop, two-day workshop about Innovative thinking workshop. So the innovative thinking, the meaning of this word, we deliver afterwards. And among these students, among you, just one student will be selected. And we will invite him to come over to Japan and you will stay three months in Japan. And the travel fee and tuition will be paid by ourselves. So please try to uh, apply this kind of uh, candidate. And uh, some of you have already applied and sent me, sent us the CVs, but you can send CVs tonight. Okay? If you want or if you change your mind. Please send your CV tonight. Okay. And today's schedule is like this. It's starting from 9 to 11, the morning class. And uh, 1.30 to 5.30 is uh, the afternoon class. And tomorrow, the workshop will start at 10 o'clock until 12. And after that, maybe around you, we will select maybe around three to six candidates and we will make an individual uh, interview to select just one participant. So the interview will be held in the afternoon. Okay. These are the today and tomorrow's uh, schedule. So first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I am and Associate Professor of KO University, Graduate School of System Design and Management. And I am teaching systems engineering or design project. Design project is somehow a design thinking approach, and systems engineering is somehow system thinking approach. 
Um, systems engineering is a way of thinking or way of designing, not in the, uh, independent of what the product is, what the service is, or what the domain is. So my background is like this. And I used to work for Mitsubishi Electric Corporation. It's a, one of the large electric company in Japan. And I was a satellite system engineer. So I designed artificial satellites, so many, that some of them are still in orbit, still in space, or in correctly. And after that, I worked for the government funded organization. And I was in charge of international cooperation in space business, or Earth observation business enhancement in all over the world. So I visited so many countries including Asia, Africa, and South America. So, my background is just in space, but now currently I'm interested in so many wide range of areas in university. This is my self-introduction. And the second is Tomita Sensei. Good morning, everyone. Okay. I'm Yoshita Komita. It's difficult to pronunciation. Call me Yoshi. Yoshi. So uh, I'm a uh, one of the faculty member at the university, and I'm CEO in the Square Company. So I have both career, academic and business. So in academic, uh, I'm teaching uh, system engineering in society and entrepreneurship and design project. They project is a kind of uh, uh, mix from uh, design thinking and uh, logical thinking. So, uh, I'm planning uh, several companies. So, uh, I was mid 20, 20. I started my first company. Uh, it, it was a uh, uh, content provider business for uh, fitness club, sports club. So then, uh, I have started uh, some company and some NPO. But now, uh, fortunately, I'm still running uh, several companies. So uh, I have, uh, and some company have a uh, little success story. But some company have very sad story. <laughs> okay? Two or three companies I have done that. So I can tell you about how to success company and how to fail company. I can tell both sides of the real business story. Yeah. So, okay. so I'm very uh, thankful. Thank you very much for visiting our workshop. And I'm very glad to talk to you about uh, business and entrepreneurship and design thinking today, uh, to, uh, this weekend. Thank you very much. Okay, hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Kyoko Watanabe, and you can call me Kathy. <laughs> you can call me Kathy. Because my name is Kyoko. Some um, English speaking people say, I call myself Kyoto. <laughs> Not Kyoto, Kyoko. So it's easier to, for you to call me Kathy, okay? And um, I'm also one of the faculty member at the System Design and Management at Keio University. And I take charge of the, um, uh, to, to teach, teach the design project, which is the six month program for all the uh, first year master students. And they're going to uh, do the work workshop and whole of six months to spend the whole six months to, to solve real one of the real problems in the society. And they get together in a group and continue the group work. And th th this is a very, very similar situation. And this is a kind of you know, demonstration for that. And also the edge program. And uh, my background is uh, here. I have this company. As a, in terms of entrepreneurship, I started my own company in 2000, 
and which is uh, for the website design and translation. And also, I, uh, as Yoshi explained, he, uh, he set up his own uh, startup business as a consultant business, and I joined his company. So I'm running now uh, two companies, and also doing you know, this kind of work at the, as a faculty member. So um, I'll, I'm going to do the most of the part in the workshop, so I'll stop talking. <laughs> so I hope you all enjoy the workshop. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Hiri Takitani. Uh, today I will be working as a teaching assistant to assist, your, assist you and support your group work. So if you need any help, please let me know. And I hope you all enjoy the workshop. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Kotaro Asada, and um, um, I'm the master course uh, student of the SDM. I'm currently running system engineering, and it's uh, nice to meet you. Please enjoy the workshop. Thank you. And again, I would like to introduce the Wanga from NASA. Okay? He's an astronaut. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, well, actually I didn't notice this photo. <laughs> we were not rehearsing this kind of picture. So, yeah. This picture, uh, I took this picture all together with the KO team members at the time, when the three months of the intensive workshop. I am very lucky to visit the JAXA. So, JAXA is... Uh, Space Agency in Japan, just like United States that have the NASA. So, yeah, I'm very, very lucky to have this opportunity to visit the JAXA. And all of this, all the moment is because i uh, very lucky to enter this program. So, yeah, I'm waiting for the next candidate. Uh, well, my message is short. So if you want to be juice, it's as simple like you, we, we already know that in entrepreneurship, you learn how to lead. But that's not all the point that we need as to, to have the entrepreneurship mind and thinking. It's about how to be never. It's not how about to lead, but how to give people around you inspiration. That's all the matter of entrepreneurship. Not just being a leader, but also inspiration for people around you, especially your team member when you're doing some project. So all of this process about the workshop, we learn about design thinking, system thinking, and also business synthesis. So you can finally execute your project and then yeah, everything goes like looping, so there's an iteration and you need, you need to validate something, you need verification. But in the end, all the process is really fun, especially when you have a nice friend among us. So then, yeah, welcome to the workshop and please give your best performance today. Thank you. Thank you, Yolanda. So, after my presentation, he will make a little bit longer presentation about what did he experience, what did he feel, what did he think during his stay in Japan last year. So, uh, I would ask you, ask him to make a presentation again later. So, starting from now, let me introduce our KO University. Today, you have already known about the name KO University, but who have already knows have already known the name of KO University before you have this workshop? Did you know the name? Oh yes, thank you. Very few. Very few. 
I know, I know the situation. Among these number of people, maybe three or five at most. So this is why we are here to introduce our university, KU University. Our KU University is founded in 1858. So we have more than 150 or almost 160 histories in Japan. Among the oldest private university in Japan. And founder's name is Yukichi Fukuzawa. Who knows his name? No. Okay. I know the situation. <laughs> but but all the Japanese people know his name, even his face. Okay. No exception. No exception. O almost not almost. All the Japanese people know his name and face. Can you guess the reason? No. Oh yes, you know very well. He is on the note, Japanese note. His face and name. This is why every Japanese people knows his name and face. So, I would ask you to remember his name and his face. Now, okay? <laughs> At the end of workshop tomorrow, I will ask you again. <laughs> okay? Please remember his name, Yukichi Fukuzawa. And let me introduce about our graduate school. Our graduate school is, we usually call KOSDM, System Design and Management. This is one of the, uh, this is the first and only graduate program for methodologies of system design and management. You are very familiar to these words, system design and management, maybe, but this is the only and first school, graduate school in Japan. And about 200 students in our graduate school, and more than 60% of students are full-time employees, okay? So working and studying. And Fumi is a working student. And Kotaro is a, just, just a study, not a working student. But the, the ratio is 60% and 40%. So, and the, our three pillars of our graduate <laughs> school is, of course, closely related to the name of the graduate school. So the system is systems engineering, and design is design thinking, and management is project management. So these three pillars are our focus to deliver the lectures or course <coughs> to the uh, research. And starting from now, I would like to introduce the EDGE program. EDGE program is a Japanese government program, not just Keiwa University. So the EDGE program is, uh, the name of EDGE is a abbreviation of this one, Enhancing Development of Global Entrepreneur Program. Okay, this is funded by Japanese government, Ministry of Education. So, Ministry of Education has, has prepared large amount of money to enhance the entrepreneurship or to educate younger people, younger generation, to become real entrepreneur or to su succeed the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial activities. And the Ministry of Education have already selected 13 universities. So at the same time, we and other 12 universities are conducting many kinds of activities in Japan as a name of edge. But our focus is like this. This is a KO edge program. This is a very specific program just conducted by ourselves. So this is a KO edge program. And the first part is a little bit long sentence, but this is most important part. 
So by learning innovative thinking approaches, okay? Innovative thinking is a keyword of our, uh, our workshop today and tomorrow. And the participants, you, will convert the strengths and mindset to, into disciplinary approach capability, new value creation capability, and new business synthesis capability necessary for innovators in global markets. This is long sentence is a key philosophy of our workshop. And the Our Age program is divided into two parts. This is the uh, Age program held in Japan, not today. But first part is intensive workshop, and the second part is project work. So, so this is a tentative schedule of this year's KO Age program, starting from middle of September. We have six days or seven days intensive workshop, and then starting from uh, October, the project-based learning will be conducted until the beginning of December. So once you are selected as one single uh, representative of ITP, you will visit Japan the beginning of September until the beginning of December this year. Okay, this is a tentative schedule of our KOH program. And here, let me introduce our long-term perspective. Not just one year, not just one single event, but we are considering, we are always considering the long-term perspective of this activity. So, this program has already started in 14, three years ago, almost years ago. And first year, participants are just from Japan. Of course, the nationality is wide variety, so, but all of them live in Japan, while well, living in Japan. And after that, these alumni will recruit the next year's participants. So this year, or oh, last year, 2015, also the many participants who are participating uh, participate in the workshop, and also from overseas, including Elanga, the four international invited students, or invited participants, from Thailand, India, Malaysia, and Indonesia. This is the last year situation. And now we are preparing for this year. 16 is the third year. So also, the alumni will recruit this year's participant, and last year's alumni in Indonesia will recruit you. Okay? You are in the right position. This is the position of you. And you will participate in this year's activity. This is uh, our idea of long-term perspective regarding uh, KOH program. So, we have already more than 100 active friends, active alumni, and you can become one of the members of this alumni. And the company alumni participants and friends or faculty will be come together to KO to make a close relationship of alumni. This is our long-term perspective. Okay? So, starting from now, this is the last part of my presentation. What is innovation? You are very familiar to the word innovation. Okay. This is our definition of innovation. There are so many definitions about innovation, but we are using this one. And this definition consists from two parts. The first part is process of turning opportunity into new ideas. 
This is the first part. This is much more familiar to you. New technology, new service, new products. It's the first part. But the second part is more important. The second part is of putting these into widely used products. So, not just inventing new products or new technologies or new services, but also these new things will be accepted or used by the society or by cellular users or certain users. So that this second part definition is very important as an innovation, the word innovation definition. And also let me introduce these two words, innovation and innovative. The definition of innovation has already shown to you, so the first part and second part. But innovative is just the approach to be uh, to generate innovation. So, let me introduce the how is it different. So there is a several, uh, some difference between innovation and innovative. So let me introduce two examples of innovation and innovative. The first in, uh, example is innovation. So, let me show you the movie regarding uh, innovation examples, okay? Save lives. So, how about that? 
This is a very simple and small idea. The bandage package and manual donor registration kit is inside in the bandage package. Very small, no new technology, no new products. But this just small idea will generate a huge effect and widely accepted in society. This is a very, we think this is a very typical example of innovation. Okay, the first part and second part are also uh, approved. Okay, and the next example is an innovative example. So please watch the movies again. Was it interesting? interesting? Yeah. This is also not new technology, but just very small idea. Have moved people, have changed people's behavior. So so many times people tell, please put the garbage into the bin. Many times, but don't without telling such a word. Just one this. Uh, product will change uh, people's behavior. This is a very important point. But is this widely accepted by society or people? Maybe not. Because maybe in uh, weeks or two weeks, people are worried about this sound. So people don't feel such uh, the sound garbage bin. But very small uh, product will change the people's behavior. This is a very important. So not widely used or not widely accepted in the society. So as the definition of innovation world, this is not the innovation. But this is the approach to innovating. So we usually distinguish innovation and innovating. It's like this. So, today, you would generate some innovative idea, not the innovation. Okay? So, the innovative is a KOH flavor, and also we'd like to you, uh, tell you to think outside the box. Outside the box is you are in the box and you try to go outside the box, okay? That we are teaching some way to go outside the box. And also, you will find new solution with a new value. So, solution and new value is one of the very important word. So, the KOH program is thinking up, so that you will recognize your box and you will go out intentionally you will go out the box it's a new value proposition okay and also
also our KOH program scope is divided into why part, what part, and how part. So the understand how, uh, understand why, define what, and ideate and synthesize how. This is the uh, three very important ideas, but not in this sequence. The sequence will be uh, determined by you, and not the fixed uh, sequence. And the, but the divided into why part, what part, and how part is very important. Okay. And also, KOH program design is like this. The, the character is not so large to read, but you have already had the domain knowledge. You are specializing in electrical engineering or business management or such kinds of, you have already uh, your own domain. And also, in, through the workshop, the interdisciplinary approach system thinking, design thinking, and business synthesis, you can generate new value creation. This is the structure of KOH program. So, not just one, this diagram. It is difficult to understand the real meaning of this structure, but once you attend the KOH uh, workshop in Japan, you can realize what this Diagram shows. Okay. So again, enjoy today's workshop. Thank you very much for listening. And starting from now, let me introduce Elwood's experience in Japan. Okay. Yes. You mentioned about the difference between uh, innovation and independence. And uh, the innovation, the keyword that I accepted is the innovation is widely used. Uh, but you mentioned that today we will tend to learn about uh, innovative, uh, which is not widely used. And uh, why, why we are not uh, pursuing innovation oh. instead of uh, innovation? Oh, yes, it's a very good question. Innovation, that by definition of innovation, the new ideas will be accepted or will be used in society. So, once you generate some good ideas, but you can determine this is widely used or not, okay? People, what the users will decide. So you can decide immediately. So today, but afterwards, after several days, several weeks, several years, the people will accept or not. So the innovation cannot be determined right now. They will be determined afterwards. This is the difference of innovation and innovating. So this is why today you are trying to generate innovative ideas, but you, it is impossible to generate innovation. Okay. This is the reason why we are aiming to generate innovative ideas, not innovation. Okay. So uh, currently, there is no methodology for uh, generating the innovation. Yeah, the innovative approach will generate innovation. So the innovation, but the closer target is innovative. So we try to reach to innovative ideas. Some of them will become innovation. This is why we are aiming the closer target as an innovative ideas. Of course, our thinking, our real goal must be innovation. But today, you are aiming the innovative ideas. Okay? Innovative ideas and innovation will be closely related, of course. But today, you will aiming, you will be aiming the closer target Innovation. Yeah. Yes. You can have strong belief to uh, make an innovation, but you can't say this is an innovation. You have you can believe it, but you can't say this is an innovation. Okay. Do you understand that? Yeah. So with the you know mindset, 
this is going to be an innovation. That's very important. Thank you. So now, this is the slide that I actually already prepared. Uh, this is actually the very, very same slide I used when I joined the age workshop, intensive workshop three months in Japan. So all the participants were from many countries, like 12 countries, like, right? 12 countries. So there's from Colombia, from Ireland, also from Mongolia, China, yeah, and many else. And, and includes the other participants, uh, which is the winner participants from the Asian, from Thailand, Malaysia, uh, India, and from Indonesia. So uh, I would like to reintroduce myself. My name is Erlanda Matika. Uh, you can call me Erlan. So I did my bachelor degree in here in uh, industrial design, product design, ITB. Uh, I graduated in uh, 2007 and now I am the second year student of the uh, Master in Management of Science in SBM. And my work experience, uh, I, 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 my work as a marketing executive in one Indonesian capital, it's actually a small medium entrepreneurship consultant. And one year after that, uh, I'm going back. Uh, I went back to my uh, to ITB and I work as a project manager in Pusti uh, Unit Super Day Informasi ITB. I'm as a project manager for the multimedia production service. And yeah, actually my hobby, my skill is, is the same. I like to make a cinematography and yeah, I really really in love with traveling and diving. Uh, this is actually the message to the other uh, KO member at the time. Like the one that I said, is the entrepreneur spirit is something that we have not as the leader, but this is something that we need to inspire people among us. So actually, that's the message I got from the KO Edge Industry Function. Yeah, so, well, more or less, this is all of my experience. One best thing that I had during the workshop is the lab. So it's actually a digital, pro uh, this, this is a prototyping lab. So there's like a 3D printers and like, how many of them? It's like five types, right? Yeah, so many of them. And not, oh, not, also, and not only the prototyping machine, there's also like, uh, what do you call it for the wooden? Yeah, laser cutter. So, so many. I mean, like, when I studied my bachelor degree in the industrial design and product design, I always imagined dream place like this, like, I could do many prototyping, I could have uh, many chance to explore something. But I always face the uh, the last facilities of the university. But then when I visit KU, I am really fortunate to have this kind of facilities. And those facilities enhance my idea. And when I have the idea, I could transfer my idea like, okay, I need to build something. I need to prototype something. But please don't think prototyping as just a prototyping as a product or maybe a 3D model. It's not as hard as that. Even if you uh, spread questionnaire, a questionnaire also is like prototyping. So definition of prototyping is it could be with uh, bigger than that. It could be smaller than that. So as you can see in the picture, in the, you can see the, about the top of the picture, those are my friend in the lab. And then I did some of the prototyping. I learned how to use the prototyping machine. And then, yeah, uh, and then 
one interesting uh, point that I experienced during the workshop is the design thinking process always involves sticky notes. So later today, <laughs> you can see uh, on your table there's lots of sticky notes. So I am really, really <laughs> in love with that sticky notes for three months. I always use them to ideate my uh, inspiration. So that sticky notes will help us to build the idea, to combine our idea. So this whole uh, workshop is not about yourself, but how to encourage the team among yourself. And then after you finish the workshop, they told me like, hey, Erlan, after you finish this workshop, we hope that you can be the next entrepreneur, build your own startup company, and please inspire them, not just only be the leader. And if you're thinking this is the serious part, no, this is actually the fun part. And the, the best fun part is actually here. <laughs> so, don't think that all the three months is just study, study, and study. So, yeah, welcome to Japan. I am very lucky to uh, involve in a, what is called, it's like uh, individual, uh, not individual project. It's a field project. So, not only individual project from the intensive workshop, but the KU member also invited me, invited us, the four participants from the Asian, to join the field project. At the time, all this picture is one of my slide presentation. There's an island, it's called Okushiri. It's located in Hokkaido. So I'm very lucky, before I went home here, uh, December, early December, I experienced the snow. So when I went uh, at September, it was like autumn, right? Uh, and then I saw the leaves, it's a green color, but when I went back around December, early December, the color of the leaves is yellow. So I'm very lucky, I experienced two seasons there. So this is the picture of the Okushiri Island. Uh, one interesting point that Okushiri Island uh, shared the same uh, characteristic with our country, Indonesia. So they have the geothermal energy source. So at the time, uh, me and the other Asian participants, four of us, are involved in this project to uh, help them, to help the KU member, because the Okushiri Island have the issue. They have, uh, they need some kind of inspiration. They need some kind of problem solving because they need, uh, they have this geothermal energy source, but they're kind of thinking like, what's the use of the geothermal energy source? And at that time, one of my proposal is was like, hey, how about build the tourism sector? Because in our country, like in Garut, in Bukit Raja, we already knew that we utilize the general energy source into the tourism sector. We built the hot, uh, natural hot spring. <coughs> but to know to me, in Japan, it's not that kind of common. So when I presented the site of the geothermal in the Bukit Draja, Garut, they kind of amazed, like, wow, geothermal energy source, they can utilize to be a hot spring water. So something like that. It, it's something new from the, for them. And yeah, the other pictures is really fun. I mean, this island has many things. They have rice field, they have winery, they have the big farming, so it's like this island can uh, have, they, they, they could build their own nation. It's kind of, although Indonesia has the 13,000 blah 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 island, I don't think that one of our islands had this kind of potential. So yeah, I'm kind of in love with this Okushiri Island, especially for the culinary. I ate the abalone. <laughs> abalone is, yeah. Yeah, abalone. I don't know, is it exist in our country? I don't think so. 
How about me? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I also experienced to wear the kimono, like in the picture. Yeah, and many things. And this is the icon of the Okushiri Island. It's the Nabin Kino. So yeah, I am very lucky to involve in this field project. So again, I really precise for all of us. Uh, please make your best from performance here because if you want lucky uh, candidate, uh, sorry, there will be like three to five candidates, right? So please make yourself the best and have the opportunity to be among the five selected, three or five selected participants, and then yeah, you will experience all the moment I had, especially about this design thinking process. So yeah, I guess that's all my experience. Thank you very much.
to make the you know, collective intelligence better. And also it says the proportion of females in the group, females, is the, one of the factors to make the collective intelligence, uh, the, to make the performance of the human groups, groups better. So that means which group don't have female? Oh, sorry about this. <laughs> but but um, it says uh, the here the sen social sensitivity is a, is a good no that counts social sensitivity counts. That means that the female usually have more uh, better social sensitivity. That in that sense we have, you, we should have more women. But I believe that all of you have you know, high social sensitivity, sensitivity, so that would be okay. Okay? <laughs> and also, this one from Harvard Business Review from 2004. This chart, this chart shows that this is the level of diversity in the group, and this is the level of ideas. So if you have, in your group, you have high level of diversity, this is the only opportunity where you can have breakthrough ideas. But at the same time, you have these junk ideas. And the average of the idea level is going down with the increase of the level of diversity. But if you want to have breakthrough ideas, you have to accept so this is one of the idea, okay? And it's your turn. It's your turn to collaborate and have breakthrough ideas. And one question is, does your group have diversity? Yes? Good, okay. So are you sitting with someone who you don't know? Good, good, okay. I thought we, we might have to shout, but you don't have to do that. want to collaborate and have collective intelligence out of your own group right now. So it's your time to do team building. Okay, so you're going to give brief introduction, maybe one minute from each person, and uh, for, with a nickname, you draw, uh, you have a name card, name card on the table, and Write down your name, nickname, or first name. Not the surname, not the family name, or Mr. something, Miss something, Professor something. No. Just nickname or first name. Okay, write down your name. And one important thing circle your name with a red pen if you have applied for the candidate. If you have sent CV, please circle your name in red so that we can see who, are, who have a slot. Okay, you got it? Question? Yes, yeah. So if you have submitted the CV as a candidate for the next year's program, this year's fall edge program, Please circle your name with red. No. Okay. I know that. What? Hold this round, around your name. Around your name. Circle your name with red. Okay. So that we can see who has applied. I know that 15 persons have applied. Okay? And put it in on your chest so we can see it. Jadi intinya ini buat yang penamaan itu buat yang sudah daftar, terutama buat yang 15 orang masuk yang mau mendaftar buat jadi kandidat keyo. Tolong dilihat di warna merah. Walaupun belum ternyata belum mendaftar, tapi mau tetap lihat ini. Soalnya ternyata 
baru diputuskan tadi malam kalau ternyata emang mau mendaftar untuk jadi kandidat ke Jepang nanti malu paling lambat kita masih tunggu enrollmentnya dan pengiriman CV-nya jadi untuk sekarang yang penting untuk orang-orang yang uh, mau tertarik buat daftar menjadi uh, kandidat KU ke Jepang silahkan namanya di lingkaran warna merah biar nanti kita bisa tandain oh yang di lingkaran warna merah itu yang mau coba daftar ke Jepang terutama buat yang 15 orang yang udah daftar di sistem ya, yang udah enroll sama kirim CV itu wajib. Buat yang belum tapi mau, silahkan nggak apa-apa, jadi kari warna merah aja. Ya, kasih. Seperti ini. And one more important thing, after introduction, please name your team. Give your team a name. And it must be innovative name. And right now, when once you decide your name, please write it down on the on this sheet of paper. Okay? <laughs> right? So uh, I'll give you ten minutes to do the whole thing. Yes. Where should I send the CV in the email address? Uh, let me answer that question with the setting. Uh, untuk nanti pengumumannya bakal saya uh, umumkan lagi. Itu sebenarnya udah berkali-kali sih. Tapi nggak apa-apa. Nanti saya umumkan lagi di mailing list kita. Diingatkan kembali linknya kemana, daftar seperti apa. Tapi yang pasti gini. Nanti ada Google Form. Itu diisi semua. Itu hitungannya udah masuk ngisi resumenya. Jadi yang nanti perlu dikirim ke email hanya CV saja. Hanya CV saja yang dikirim ke email. Jadi, ada dua langkah. Satu, isi Google Form-nya. Nggak lama kok. Isi box resume-nya, words-nya nggak terlalu banyak. Udah diisi semua Google Form-nya. Habis itu, kirim CV-nya ke email yang nanti ada tertera di situ. Nanti semuanya bakal ada jelas di email kok. Oke. Okay. Is there any Oke, okay. uh, can I check whether my name is already on the list? Oke, okay. uh, yeah. Let me ask you Oke, okay. buat yang namanya merasa belum tertulis atau udah tertulis, uh, nanti sore habis workshop sama saya nanti bakal diumumkan mana aja yang sudah terdaftar. Jadi nanti tahu yang udah terdaftar itu biar nggak dua kali uh, ngirim ya. Oke, okay. nanti sore bakal saya umumkan siapa aja yang udah uh, isi Google Form dan siapa aja yang udah masukin CV. Soalnya beberapa bahkan ada yang udah isi Google Form tapi belum isi belum ngirim CV. Nanti sama saya bakal dibikin listnya yang mana yang udah yang mana yang belum. Terutama sih yang udah. Okay. Uh, gimana? Yang merah. Kalau memang mau mendaftar, wajib tulis aja, ditulis aja. Walaupun nggak uh, ingat sudah mendaftar atau belum, tapi intinya kalau pengen uh, ikut gabung buat jadi kandidat, dilihat itu doang. Is there any question? Oke, okay, thank you. Oke, okay, so we can only do ten minutes. So you can start now. Ten minutes. Introduction,
So uh, please your, use, use your best time and in front of us, in front of you, there is the timer. Okay, so please notice the timer. Okay, please continue. <laughs>
柿があっていいですね。
a tower using only the materials shown on this slide. And you're going to have it right now. Very simple. They're going to distribute it. It's 20 sticks of spaghetti, one yard tape, one yard string, and one marshmallow. <coughs> and build a tower using these materials and put a piece of marshmallow on top. You gotta build a tower with the spaghetti. And you put the marshmallow on the top. And we're gonna measure the height of marshmallow. Okay. The height of marshmallows. The purpose of this activity is to have the highest point of the marshmallow. And some rules. Tower must stand alone. Tower must stand alone. You can use tape to stand it. But you cannot cut marshmallow. You cannot cut much marshmallow. And you cannot eat much. <laughs> and you can break spaghetti if you want. You can break it. And when it's unexpectedly cut, then we can exchange the spaghetti. Okay? And here's what you do. Build the tallest standing structure. If you want to win, build the tallest standing structure. The winning team is the one that has the tallest structure measured from the tabletop surface to the top of the mushroom. See, I, I'm repeating it because it's very important. We're going to measure, measure the mushroom. Okay? And this is what you, you should do. You don't cheat. You don't cheat. Some people do this. Some people do this. Put on the mushroom on the table and you know, put it like that. Or some people will put a, a, a string on the table and have it on the, on the string of the marshmallow. And it's going to be a very high place, but it's cheap. Okay, you have to the stand, you have to have the power stand on the table. Okay, so it's going to be 18 minutes. We gotta measure 18 minutes. Oh, yes. So first, I think uh, the table is kind of messy. So please clear out your stuff out of the table and make some space for building the power. Okay? So that you can concentrate building the power. Okay, so we can measure. You're going to measure 18 minutes, and if you want to have another spaghetti, in, in case you have just broken the spaghetti and expected me, please raise your hand and hold the yes. They want to change the spaghetti. Okay? So, Chuck, are you ready? 
Ini panitianya bakal keliling. Jadi kalau ada spaghetti yang patah boleh minta tambahan ya. Sorry bukan tambahan, mengganti. Gak ada yang minta tambahan, tapi mengganti.
the address this is the Doing the writing in the wrong way. <laughs> 30 minutes. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. <laughs> Okay, we're going to count down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Explaining about what is the point 
to do this activity. Here's what happened. Not one team had a standing structure. 
not one had, uh, uh, if anyone had built, say, a, a one-inch structure, they would be taking the, the prize. So isn't it interesting that high stakes uh, have a strong impact? We took the exercise again to the same students. What do you think happened then? So now we understand the value of prototyping. So the same team went from being the very worst to being among the very best. They produced the tallest structures in the least amount of time. So there's deep lessons for us about the nature of incentives and success. So we would ask, why would anyone actually spend time on the marshmallow uh, challenge? And the reason is I helped create visual tools and processes to help uh, teams build cars and video games and visual effects. Um, and what the Marshmallow Challenge does is it helps them identify the hidden assumptions. Because frankly, every project has its own marshmallow. The, the challenge provides a shared experience, a common language, a common sense to build the right prototype. And so this is the value of the experience of this so simple exercise. And those of you who are interested may want to go to marshmallowchallenge.com. It's a blog that you can look at how to build uh, the marshmallows. There are step-by-step -step instructions on this. Uh, there are crazy examples from around the world of how people tweak and adjust the system. There's world records that are on this as well. And the fundamental lesson, I believe, is that design truly is a contact sport. Uh, it demands that we bring all of our senses to the task and that we apply the very best of our thinking, our feeling, and our doing to the challenge that we have uh, at hand. And sometimes a little prototype of this experience is all that it takes to turn us from uh, an uh-oh moment to a ta-da moment, and that can make a big difference. Thank you very much. Okay. So, who have laughed at the business school students? <laughs> so I know that um, many of you are learning business, but I also heard that you got uh, this. You know, ITV has installed uh, the design thinking course, so that's why they need this kind of you know work, uh, you know, idea. Because if you only pursue the business. If you only think about the business to be successful, that, like he said, um, you're going to have the single right answer. You're going to pursue the single right answer, but that's not good. You understand that, right? So, in that sense, um, design thinking is very, very important, becoming more and more important nowadays to install in the business sector. So, uh, these are the key takeaways from these activities. Too much time in thinking. Maybe you have um, thought a lot about uh, thinking, and some people make you know the uh, how to some drawings and how how to make a tall build, tall tallest tower, and small chance to try. That means that you have who have um, put the marshmallow on the stick of spaghetti in the very early days. I yes, because you were here last year. <laughs> I, I I remember. So that's that's a good good one. So actually, we checked how early these you know these teams right, and how how was that? Two three teams put try to have the marshmallow on the spaghetti in very early phase. Those teams understand that how the marshmallow is heavy, it's heavy, and actually the spaghetti itself is very weak, and it cannot bear the marshmallow, the weight of the marshmallow. So you have to know that in early stage. So that means that try and fail first is very, very important. And also to remember the real goal of your activity. What was the real goal of your activity? Making the tallest tower with the spaghetti? Was it the purpose? No. Goal. Goal was the marshmallow, way. Right? Having the, the marshmallow on top and on the highest place. So, so um, some people, like I remember, like, this team trying to make the mash up the tall building, the tallest building with the, uh, this spaghetti. And maybe forget about the marshmallow, right? <laughs> So sometimes in your actual activities, you lose the goal. You forget about the goal, and you 
concentrated on how to do it, what to do it, rather, you know, how to do it. You try, you tend to concentrate, and it's not a good thing, right? And also, the so, so remember the real goal of your activity. So what is the goal? What to do is more important, which is the putting the marshmallow as high as possible. Mm -hmm. And try not to think about how to do it. And collaboration, of course, is very, very important. Okay, and so this is all about the team building. And now you are all set as a team because you have you know done with the team building, a lot to do with the team building. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, what's going to be in, in this workshop today. Okay. Okay, this is the whole picture. Sorry. This is the uh, context, first context. Okay, you are in the team thinking about launching a startup business in healthcare domain. Healthcare. And your scope is global and have not decided what to focus on yet. You are in the phase of developing your concept with a consensus of live logging. Log, live logging. So you're going to do something, we're going to um, have some business, start a business with a healthcare with a concept of live logging. That's all you have. This is the context. And this is the whole picture of this uh, project framework. You have problem definition, ideation, architecting, and business synthesis. And alongside, you have research and analysis and some other activities. And this looks quite linear, but it's not. You can see these you know, arrows going up and down. You do iteration. <coughs> So like this, iteration takes place. You, all of you understand what iteration is? Yes? It's, it's something different from repeating. It's not the same as repeating, but iteration. And out of the iteration, you find insights. And this is the real um, purpose of today's workshop. We're going to uh, use several tools and techniques like brainstorming and some other techniques but the purpose is to have the insight out of the output not just the output you have to find insight so that it could be become an output no outcome of the work so try to find insight and those insights is going to drive the next activity of your project and in that way, you're going to, to have this iteration. Okay, so finding insight. What's, what's the insight? What's the insight? Is it familiar word, insight? Yes, but is there anybody who can explain what the insight is? It's, it's difficult, yeah. Understanding. Understanding. How it actually works. Okay, what's one definition? <coughs> okay, so in our um, faculty, we, we think like this. And if you look at the dictionary, some definitions are like an instance of apprehending the true nature of a thing, especially through intuitive understanding. Intuitive understanding. And seeing into inner character or underlying truth. A penetrating mental vision. So we think that insight shows the new direction and dimension to create innovative solutions. You can find insights from your discussions, from your outputs and other outcomes. And you can have uh, multiple insights to develop your product definition, idea, architecture, and business, and use them as your 
building parts. So insights are going to be your building parts to make an innovative solution. And most of the solution is built around your favorite, strongest, and unique insight. If you like this insight, I think you're going to find many insights out of your work from today and tomorrow. But if you want to, if you really like this insight, you're going to stick it. And that will make you a very, very innovative idea or solution. Okay? So this is one of the examples. Uh, USB, USB memory. You know, everybody is using it. Right? This is how the story of a USB flash memory was developed. It was one of the insights of a Japanese concept creator that brought about this concept. He is, his name is Hideshi Hamaguchi. He is a business, he is a concept creator and strategist. He is a working at uh, Jiva, one of the design firm in America. And he's, he's very famous, actually, and he makes a lot of money out of his work. And this is how he found this, his insight. In, in 1999, he was uh, discussing about the future of the data management. And this one, sorry, this one, and he, he made this two by two matrix. And he put this here, user experience, tangible and intangible. And this dimension, size of the data, small size, large size. And in that eight, uh, people were using to store the data, this. Have you ever seen this? Yes. Yes? <laughs> Floppy disk. Very old type, right? <laughs> Nobody's using it anymore. And at that time, this was okay. But with the increasing number of people using the digital camera and the, the, uh, PowerPoint displays, the PowerPoint data, and the, the volume of the size is very, very increased, increased. So it's going to be bigger and bigger. So this single floppy disk, this cannot uh, store all the data, even single in picture. So they have to think about the future of the data management. And everybody was thinking about it. It will be okay because it's going to be everything is going to be wireless, so you don't have to worry about that. But his insight was focused on here. This segment. His insight was this: we want tangible experience, even if everything is going to be wireless, because if this you know data is very very important, maybe. People would like to have this physically, intangible, in, in a something in something tangible thing, not just you know, going on the internet and store it in a wireless place, crowd sort of crowded crowd. So in that way, he found USB memory. So this is out of his insight. So what his insight is like? Okay. Yes. Sorry. Uh, can you explain how the inventor come up with that insight? Because uh, you want to tell me about the, uh, he draws the, the diagram. He draws the diagram, but uh, uh, you didn't explain to how he come up with that insight. How he came up with the insight? Well, taking a look at this uh, diagram, everybody would thought that okay, it's going to be this. Everybody was going to focus on this, so the people don't have to think of, of anything in this area. But he. That's his insight. So, how? Insight came to you. 
Because uh, you mentioned before that this mm -hmm. comes from the iteration. And yes. And uh, from, from many iterations, we gain insight and come up into one mm -hmm. uh, innovation. Okay. And okay, many iterations, you have insight, and in another way, from one word, you can find one insight. And that makes your next activity to make iteration. What what the iteration that uh, being done by the inventor so he can come up with a USB? Do you know what kind of iteration he made? Actually, uh, we don't know. He has not explained about what he did doing this iteration. But he he only says that he has found this you know insight doing you know having this chart and he found. Okay, this area is empty. But people would think this empty place is okay. But I would say that it should be something in this segment. So that, that's his insight. That's his uh, very important finding. It would be very interesting if we can trace into his iteration. So we can yeah, yeah, yes. Yes, okay. Okay. Okay, so the insight, it's unusual but interesting. So the finding, finding here as insight is not usual because usual people would think that this part, this is the important part, segment. But he thought this is an important segment. So it's unusual but very interesting insight. And also unfamiliar and convincing. So this is one you know, uh, way to explain about the insight. And where, when do we find insight in, the, in this entire scope? As Makoto, Makoto Sensei has explained, this is the whole uh, scope of the scale edge program, covering why domain, what domain, and how domain. And in, in many cases, in this how domain, people would think that insight, finding insight is very important in this segment. But rather, these why and what domains is very, very important to find insights. In this process, if you find insights in why and what domain, you will be able to find innovative how. So try to find good insight here. Why is important? Why do we do this? And what do we do this? What to solve? What is the problem? What to achieve? So ask yourself these questions and try to find insight. OK, and so when you try to uh, find insight. This is a kind of tip to find insights. Looking at the whole, not just part. I think um, Professor Utomo has explained earlier that um, looking at the whole as a system, systemic way, and also the systematic in details, analyzed, both are very, very important. And Using your viewpoints as a whole and details, you can find insight. It's one tip. And also change the viewpoint. If you take a look at things in one viewpoint, you everybody see the thing as the one you know view, right? But if you change the viewpoint, everything you can see, you can see as a view is totally different. So try to have another viewpoint. Change the viewpoint. And sometimes the insight could be a trend or new question. And for all, all the rest of the work, you're going to have many insights. And insights or findings you're going to um, find today, you're going to write down, try to write down what you are going to find as an insight or even findings. And please uh, decide the color, choose the color of your insight. Your group, maybe blue, is the inside color. 
on the you know, sticky note. I'm talking about the sticky note. Please write down some you know, insight on one particular color of your sticky note. So that you can you know, see all the things are, these are insights. Okay? So, uh, the whole process. We are going to do uh, two by two methods. First, we're going to do problem definition, and we're going to use this technique, two by two methods. This is not a uh, very um, <coughs> unusual thing. This is kind of usual matrix, but uh, unusual way we're going to explain. And ideation, brainstorming, another very common way to do uh, this activity. And in this architecting business synthesis, we are going to do CBCA. I'm going to introduce a tool called CBCA, which is a value, uh, customer value chain analysis. And also tomorrow, we are going to do prototyping and test. So we're going to do four tools and methods. And out of the every activity, you're going to find insights. Okay, this is the goal and make iterations. Okay, so it's time to have break. Okay, lunch break. And you're going to come back here at 1.30, okay? Okay? So I'll see you at 1.30 and in the afternoon session, you're going to do a lot of work. So be energetic. Okay, have lunch and come back at 1.30. Okay, thank you. Uh, Oke, okay. uh, untuk sekarang kita bakal break. Kita bakal break untuk yang muslim, silahkan uh, buat untuk jumatan. Kemudian untuk makan siang, itu udah disiapin sama panitia lunch provider. Itu nanti makanan udah di set, persis di bawah tangga, lantai tiga, di begitu turun tangga persis, nanti di rasa air, di koridornya, nanti udah bakal ada meja yang pas mana. Itu bakal di set nanti 12.30. Oke. Okay. Uh, dan mohon tadi ada pemberitahuan dari bagian prasarana agar tidak memakai ruangan kelas untuk makan. Jadi uh, mohon maaf untuk area, area makan hanya di sekitar koridor saja ya. Jangan dibawa makanan masuk ke dalam sini, pokoknya jangan mau masuk ke dalam kelas. Jadi silahkan makan di koridor mungkin kayak tadi pasti. Terus mohon sudah stay by di sini 15 menit sebelum acara ya. Jadi 1.15. Semuanya sudah sampai lagi di sini, sudah dalam keadaan selesai makan. Oke, okay? uh, teman-teman silahkan uh, waktunya break dan kita tunggu lagi kehadirannya jam 1.15 dan jangan lupa makan siang di koridor bawah. Oke, okay? terima kasih.
team when we're thinking about the long-term startup business in healthcare related. Yeah, this is the context. And you are a PBL team, so you're working on innovating healthcare solutions for business development. Okay, and let's get started. The problem definition is the first thing we're going to do. So this one, the problem definition, we're going to do this. So problem definition is something you do, not the given by the company or, or social, anybody, given from anybody. It, it's something you do, define the problem. It's not defined by you know, like business. Even if the business and companies give you some you know, problem and I want you to solve this problem, you have to doubt that is this the problem really? You have to think that way. So define your own solution, define your own problem. So I'm going to tell you how. Okay. Especially if the problem is very big, if it, it can be said that it is more difficult to find an innovative idea or solution for an ordinary or big problem or question. Like, this is an example. How can we improve the automobile gas mileage? If you are in the context of thinking about the, you know, decreasing the gas mileage for the auto automobiles, this is a big thing. Because many, for many years, many experts in the industry are, have been thinking about this. And if you are a startup business doing some kind of automobile, you shouldn't challenge this. Because you're going to lose this fight. Because they are experts, they have spent so many years thinking about this. So what you do is to define your own problem, okay? So define your problem or question so it is unfamiliar but interesting and also important. For example, if you, are, if you think about the gas mileage, why don't you put this in this way? How can we improve the accumulated gas mileage of a person or his or her cars? in a time frame of 10 years. Why don't you put the, the concept of time frame in the gas mileage? Usually the gas mileage is the, just for that moment without any you know, thinking about, considering about the time frame. But the gas mileage changes depending on who is driving the car and how he is driving the car and where you, they, they drove, are driving the car. It depends on this situation. So why don't you put the time frame in this concept? So it can be one of the redefined problem is this, how can we improve the accumulated gas mileage? So try to find innovative problem space that is fascinating and worth investing time to explore. So this is also called reframing the problem. This is one of the another example. Have you ever seen this? Yes. Do you have this? Oh, good. This is called Honey Nux. Honey Nux. Uh, this is produced by a Japanese uh, stationery company, for, uh, manufacturing company, Kokuyo. And it's a staple-free stapler. It's a stapler. It's something to, to bundle, you know, paper, some papers. But using no staples. Okay, so the question, maybe the product definition for this <coughs> product might have been this. How might we staple documents without using staples? The so manufacturer of Hokuyo was not stuck with their bias for conventional stapler because stapler uses staples, right? That's the, that's the way of it is, right? So everybody thought that staples should use staples. Stapler should use staples. 
But somebody said that why don't we have you know this product without staples? And they appreciated that idea, and they made up this you know product. So the question seems to be very crazy in the beginning. However, the manufacturer did not stop, stop expanding their solution space. This is some of the example. Have you ever seen this? Yes, yes. Where? No. Who said yes? Yeah. What is it? It's a helmet. Helmet, yes. It's basically a bicycle helmet. The concept is come from a car when accident. Yes. It's something else. Airbag, yes. So it's a mixture of airbag and bicycle helmet. Yes. So, I was going to ask, what was the problem definition for this product? How do you think? Actually, it's uh, like a camouflage, so the user can still be fashionable mm -hmm. while driving. Yeah. Okay, very good. The problem definition could be, how can we have the helmet pop up when only when it is dangerous, right? So that they can, you know, girls can keep their hairstyle cozy. Maybe, maybe. So this kind of thing is the problem reframing. Not just the, you know, helmet. For the, to, to think about the better helmet, maybe they would think that stronger helmet. So the, the point they are looking at the helmet is totally different. So this is uh, one of the aspects is invisible helmet. Invisible. So this spot, this spot pops up like this when something happens. So before something happens, it's like this. So it's kind of fashionable without having you know, hard helmets. So this one is another example. So like this, um, you can have many kinds of approach for problem definition. Of course, design thinking approach, after field work, observation, interview, empathize, prototyping and testing, you find some insight to have another, uh, your specific definition for, toward this problem. And also, of course, you can uh, use system thinking approach and even logical thinking approach, statistical, and some Google research, so some Google search, data analysis, anything, anything. So try to find your own definition toward this a problem. So this time for this workshop, the problem is something about the healthcare. So now we are going to uh, define your own problem health of the healthcare. So find interesting insight and define the problem. Okay, this is another example. We are doing this kind of uh, workshop and program at a girls' high school in Japan. And one of the teams have come up with the problem. It was very big, global warming. It is too big to tackle, right? As a, you know, girls in their age of 16, 17, 18. And they did the field work. And they have come up with the uh, knowledge that they asked some questions to uh, their friends and their parents and their family, how they are doing, uh, what, what they are doing to uh, do with the global warming, uh, stop the global warming. And they found that um, people are doing something to tackle the global warming, but they, everybody said that they, I, I like you know, I switch off the light often, and, but they don't know that uh, how how much contribution they are doing. 
they're making in order to stop the global warming. So they put it this way. They refine this problem like this. How might we make people quickly feel that what they did contributes to stop global warming? So their redefined problem is to know that, to make people know that they are contributing to stop the problem, the global warming. So this is one of the reframing the problem. And another one is example is like uh, Yoki Sensei has just explained uh, the trash can with the sound of you know going down. You remember that? So the problem, for, original problem, should be how to clean litter on the ground in a park. So people would think that we should notice, give some notice, saying that please don't waste, throw away your you know, litters or put your litters in the garbage can. But they, would, they redefine the problem like this. How might we make people like to throw litter into trash can? How do they enjoy this activity? This is reframed problem. Okay, so the problem definition is something like this. So it's your turn to define a problem, healthcare, with a concept of life logging. So reframe and redefine your problem into a statement of how might we blah blah blah. In this way. These are the steps. First, what you're going to do is to list up what are already there about the healthcare. What are the products in the market about the healthcare with a concept of life logging? And also any elements, factors you think of, anything, just list up. And after that, you plot them on two by two matrix. Okay? And after plotting them, you take a look, the whole thing, and find the insights. So these are the steps you're going to have reframed problem. Okay, first one. So list of items, factors or elements you can think of about healthcare with a concept of life flow. So we're gonna use the whiteboard paper. This paper, big paper, the white one, these are whiteboard paper. You can use these pens. These pens are whiteboard markers. You can use them to write down anything. Or also write use use these when you write down something on this sticker note. So write down whatever you think of about the healthcare with the concept of life logging on this and put them on the sheet. Okay? Yes. Life logging. Life logging is something you you record uh, for the life logging. How do you explain life logging? No, no, no. It's, it's um, yeah, yeah, good. Life is recording some some of the data, like health data. This is one of the examples. <laughs> You know the word load? Recording the data about your Ten
um, you know what's in your box. Going out of the box is innovation, innovative thinking, like Yoki Sensei explained. So this process is what's in the box. Knowing that, knowing what's in the box, what's what in your, your brain. Thank you. 
Berarti, oh berarti
the examples is this. What are the innovative axes? <laughs> okay, one of the innovative axes is usually. Yes. Usually, one axis, one direction here is beautiful, then here should be ugly, not beautiful. Opposite one. But it could, this could be one set of axes. Beautiful and cute. You can put it. It doesn't have to be totally opposite thing. And also, boy, when one side comes boy, then this side could be girl. But here, boy and beautiful boy. It could be like this. It's interesting, right? Yes, you can play around, actually. And find insects. This is how it works. This is a tip. This is beautiful and cute came from this way of thinking. This one end is good looking, then the other end is bad looking. But on this level, if you break down this level, it could be many of this. It could be cute and beautiful. So this way of thinking you can think of, you know, unusual axis. This is one of the, one of tips. So breaking down the segment of good looking, if you break down this, then this would be one set of axis. Okay? So uh, please continue. Ten more minutes. Please think of innovative access, creative access, and then plot your what you have on the post-it notes. We take 10 more minutes.
out of this other process, using the insight out of this two by two then process work. Okay? So I'll give you 20 minutes. If you have if you want to have more time in finding insights, then go on with the work and try to define your problem and make it this sentence. How might we blah blah blah? So this please uh, after this work, please share. I'm gonna ask some of your uh, the groups to present the definition, problem definition. Okay? So take uh, 20 minutes to maybe find more insights and then define your own problem. But the health care. Okay? Okay, 20 minutes.
ada lagi nanti Okay, Mas. 
how much we can categorize the urgency of patient and its preliminary health status. So if the hospital knows the health status before the patient comes, it can uh, shorten the process and uh, help the patient faster. So maybe we can call it like a human black box, maybe it's an app for something, and it records the accident and the blood type and pressure and everything. So the hospital can give uh, exact, precise and fast <coughs> minutes off from our group. Okay, thank you very much. And, and you found uh, another problem definition. Okay, oh, yes. Uh, yes, we have uh, two actually. Like uh, the black box is the preventive. So we know like uh, our health status and confidential, confidential data. And also there also a possibility of a second product, like uh, on the spot. So people that are uh, unconscious maybe cannot give a card or no identification can just be scanned with a device and let uh, let give card or something to make it uh, faster for the Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my okay. Uh, the, the problem you found it's very interesting and I think you can stick it stick to it. But the, the other one, the, the second one, yeah on the on the spot thing. I, what I hear is more like a um, solution. I could hear it as a solution, right? So what, I, what you are doing now is the, to define a problem. So problem definition and you know, solving it and solution, finding a solution, is, it, it has to be very you know, far. But it's easy, easily come up with a solution. But try not to think of the solution, okay? So stick to problem definition, okay? So I think I can see some of the groups have um, started working on the solution, okay? Solution comes later. So try to stick to the problem definition. And I like that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And this is... <laughs> <laughs> okay, good afternoon, friends. Uh, uh, this is our uh, response. So we have a two axes. First is about the intensity of the activities itself, uh, especially for the physical activities. First, we uh, break down as a high intention of physical activities and then low intention of physical activities. And the second axis is about the activities that do it alone and also in a group. And from this uh, result, we see that most of people do a high physical, uh, low intention of physical activities to support their health in alone. Uh, and several uh, people do a, a high uh, intention of physical activity, intensity of physical activities like yoga, jogging, and health campaign uh, to support their uh, healthy in a group and also uh, by themselves. But uh, we see that uh, there is uh, no, uh, there is nothing uh, to support a healthy in a low physical intensity of activities in a group. So that's why we define our problem as how might we have less physical activities intention in group to support our healthy. And this is uh, our suggestion. We have we, uh, we build some kind of apps with a point system uh, to make uh, trigger, to trigger the member to do and join in a long term in our uh, community and also uh, the activity will share in uh, their social media. Why? Because we know that the behavior of the society is connected to their social media as their existency. So that's why we, uh, we want to bring this existency and this kind of existency will try to encourage or trigger another friends in their social media. To in this community and 
And for the failure, we are explained by Mr. Uh, Wendy. Okay. I just want to ask to highlight the problems that we're having here. <coughs> the problems, if you do everything here alone, is that you get carried away by yourself. You do a diet, you do two weeks, and then you quit. You do a gym workout, uh, four weeks, and then you quit. But by bringing them to the group, uh, it gives you more powers to, to, to stick to the plan. It gives you uh, support community, and that's what, what we're looking for. Uh, yeah, so the values that we have in here is just uh, the enhancing support from the societies to get you healthier. I think that's all for our presentations. Thank you. This group's uh, problem definition is to how to involve many, many other people to make myself you know, healthy and using not so physical Yeah, it's like many people And also, you also mentioned about the, the things with the, you know, the SNF thing and uh, kind of solution type thing, but it's good, it's good, because it's not a real solution, but you beginning to think of kind of solution is good. So try not to jump into the solution, but try to think a little bit about the solution is good, okay? Okay, okay thank you very much. Now, So now it's time to think about the value. Value. This is the second one. Out of the definition, product definition, you have to think of value. So what you want to do out of the innovative or innovation solution, you want to create a new value. Right? And it's all about the KWH program. So innovative thinking and entrepreneurship enables to create new value. Okay, by the way, what is value? Professor Utomo has this morning explained about the value. It's one of them is money, right? But it's not everything. What is value? <coughs> Very hard to explain. For most of the people, it's easy if you think them as a value. Money and that the count. But, like you saw on the video, this health remedies uh, bandage. This is uh, one of the very important value for the people who want to do the <coughs> surgery of the marrow transplant. Okay, you remember this video? Yeah. And also Wikipedia. This is not anything to do with the money, right? Nobody is paying for this. But some people, some people, but you will not pay for this service. But you use it every day because you find value. And also, these are the fundraising, a crowd, crowd fundraising uh, websites. And these are the new values created in the websites. So, value is something to be perceived by customers. If you think that you are providing value, if the customer doesn't find it valuable, then it's not a value. Okay? It has to be perceived by customers. And value is always defined by those who use it or pay for it. So what is the benefit to a specific person or customer? This defines the perceived value. And the value is sometimes someone's benefit, someone's gain, someone's joy, someone's satisfaction someone's pain relief, help, sometimes it's excitement, and peace of mind. 
these could be valued too. It's very personal. So, what I want you to do now is to explore values that should be delivered to users or customers. For example, so uh, this is the one of the frameworks to divide, to think of the, the values. Pain relievers and gain creators. You can divide values into these two groups and try to think of the values in this segment and in this segment. For example, in case of personal mobility, one of the values created by this personal mobility is as a pain reliever is this, much less strain on legs. If someone is very tired and a lot of strain on legs, if that person get on the personal mobility, she uses that mobility, then the strain on legs is much less. So this is the, uh, uh, the values for her as a pain reliever, okay? And as a game creators, one of the examples of the value could be exhilarated feeling. There is no problem. This is not uh, based on the problem, but if you take a ride at the, on the personal mobility, you can get this feeling exhilarated feeling. So this is a kind of added gain, an added value you didn't expect. Okay? So, describe value proposition. What are the important values to be delivered in order to solve your redefined problem? You have redefined your problem, each team. So what are the important values to be delivered in order to solve your redefined re problem? And try to think who will receive what kind of value. So list up important pain relievers and gain creators to be delivered for each team of the, each problem definition. And state who will receive those values? And make it this kind of chart using another new sheet of paper. You have enough uh, lab sheet of paper, okay? So make this chart, define stakeholders here, and values here. As a pairing members, game creators, and you don't have to fill every everywhere. Just think of any space you can think of. <coughs> and think of the values. Okay? I give you 20 minutes. So you can start. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
After I went home from the KOH workshop, then I've got this kind of spirit. I mean like, hey, I want to be more practical. I want to explore more about ideas, about could it be the idea uh, executed to the business, how about the user experience or something like that. So actually, uh, after uh, the whole session of the workshop, in the end of the workshop, I will spread some questionnaires and still there's some of the uh, mater uh, materials from the workshop that need to help in the questionnaire because I need to make the new value creation. So please uh, to have the cooperate with you all guys. So yeah, this is the mezzo and don't worry, it's for free. <laughs> okay, so let's continue the workshop. So, have you thought about this? Problem definitions and value composition. Maybe it's good to uh, describe the statement as a statement. Problem definition is this, and value composition is this. And for this moment. Uh, do you need maybe a sheet of paper or maybe two big papers? Two big papers. Yeah. yeah, if you have any piece of paper, you can write down, or if you need some paper, we have some paper. Okay, please write down these two statements. Right now. And one important thing, important thing. Sometimes your problem definition and value proposition is not considerable. Sometimes. Because you think of the problem first, and then try, when you try to find the value, maybe some value you can find more than you know, the problem definition to solve this problem. So in that case, you can change. You can change the problem definition to be consistent with this value problem position. And this activity you can iterate so many times. So today, for this workshop, we're going to do this just once. But real situation, you can do so many times. Problem definition and value proposition. Try to think so many times and do the iteration. Okay? So, now. Ideation. Next process is ideation. We're gonna do some brainstorming. So have you described the value proposition? A very important one. The most important one. Have you finished? You have finished. Not yet? Okay, I, I give you five minutes to do this one. Yeah, to decide the value proposition to be try to be consistent with problem definition. If you want to change the problem definition, it's okay. We can change the problem definition. Okay, I want you to pen. Tapi problemnya adalah measure Problemnya tadi kan ini mati. Dia lagi lehan sugar, sugar sama nasi. 
buat water Oh, the value you you want to provide.
aja. Sementara ini kita bikin kan sekarang ini bikin yang gampang ya, Pak.
try to associate with other ideas, build on other ideas. Okay? So, for example, this one says, coffee to keep you awake. Then this, another member said, green tea to keep you awake. This is, you know, connected and associated and building, built on other ideas. <coughs> and once this person says green tea to keep you awake, then the third person would say energy drink to stay awake. So this way you can spread your idea very, very widely. Okay? And when you post the post-it note, write clearly and don't write in detail, just the simple headlines. And sometimes you can draw, you can have a drawing instead of writing. And when you post it, post your, your post-it note, your idea, please stay vocally. Say it, read it loud, so that everyone can know this guy is saying this, and this guy is posting this idea. And the purpose is to connect your brains. Okay? So you have to stimulate your other's you know, brains. And this is another rule. Go for quantity, build on others' ideas, and encourage wild ideas. Defer judgment, and do not block the others. This means, um, Defer judgment means don't judge right now because it's limited time. Brainstorming like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, that's enough. For those, for that period of time, don't judge. Just keep associating your um, the ideas and as much as possible, go for quantity. The quality will be secured by other activities. So don't think of the quality. Just think of the quantity. Okay? And if you want to judge, you can judge later. Not during this brainstorming work. Okay? So that means defer judgment. Okay. So positive feedback. This is another important thing. What, but once someone posts one idea. Others would say, nice, I like it. So positive feedback. Good job. Son. Good job, yeah. <laughs> Good job. That's cool. Don't say that, oh, I don't like it. Never, don't say negative comments. Okay? So positive feedback is very, very important. So these are the rules. Go for quantity, easy to understand, brainstorming more, positive feedback, and build on the ideas of others. Okay? And one important uh, tip. Strategic brainstorming tips. So once you are brainstorming, you're going to uh, generate the ideas for solutions right now to deliver that value you have just defined, okay? So what is the question to ask for the brainstorm? You need some question. What do you brainstorm? So if you think that, like for example, if a, if a communication tool if you, your group has to try to uh, have, find a, some idea about the new communication tool, then is it easy to have the question for the brainstorming what is going to be a you know, future new communication tool? Is it easy to answer? Is it? <laughs> is it easy? Right, so try to have the question to ask as easy as possible to have many ideas on this sheet. This is very difficult, but very important point. So ask the question that is suitable for brainstorming. Ask the question that is suitable for brainstorming. Questions that the diversity might help to answer. 
questions that are interesting to expand the solution space. Questions that logical or critical thinking would not provide an innovative solution. How might we solution? So these are the <coughs> tips to have a suitable question for the brainstorming on your team, on your topic. Okay? So, first you have to do is to have made a question for the brainstorm. What question do you ask to ideate the solution? How would the question for problem definition? Yeah, you, can, you can use the problem definition also. So, so, okay, this is one example. How might we communicate face to face without a common language? This is one way to ask for the brainstorming question to make to ideate new communication device. <coughs> so don't ask just what are the new communication device. It's very important, difficult to answer, and it does not expand the solution space. But why don't you ask how might we communicate face to face? So this is uh, another. Uh, Program definition, going back to the program definition, maybe they have found that the definition as the face-to-face -face communication. Yeah, so this is one example to ask in the brainstorming question. How might we communicate face-to-face -face without a common language? So if you are asked that question, these posts could be uh, positive, like hand gestures, body gestures, facial expressions, dance moves, so these things. Okay, how might we communicate face to face without a common language? So discuss and come up with a brainstorming question to explore the solution space as wide as possible for your stated value proposition. Okay, first, think about and discuss the question to ask for the brainstorming session, and write down the question clearly on the paper, on the sheet of paper you're going to do the brainstorming. And do the brainstorming, and while you're doing the brainstorming, maybe you want to change the question because you find it, it's not easy to you know, answer this question. So you can change. Many times you can change. Okay? So I want you to do this in 20 minutes. Okay? You got the idea? Okay, so I'll give you 20 minutes. Just one question. You will generate just one question. You have already defined the program. How might we question? How might we Positive people. Okay? You must say. Whenever. Whatever. Whatever. If you like it, please say like it. If you don't like it, Again, say it right. <laughs> Don't forget. Anyway, anyway, you say something positive.
dollar, oh, sorry, dollar mark for money or capital. If it's a money, this is the mark you can describe as a flow. And icons for the product. These are the product <coughs> and service for information. And this is the mark for claims or regulations. <coughs> like these marks, but you can describe, actually describe what the value is. And the doctor is going to give this product to a patient. This is a cardiographic monitor, so this patient is, uh, has heart disease, heart disease. Imagine he has a heart disease, though he is not looking like a you know, heart disease patient. <laughs> And he, the doctor let this patient use this monitor and the patient is going to give the information for the doctor so that he can you know, diagnose his, uh, his situation more easily. So the third step is perform analysis. Who is the important customers? Trace the dollar mark and these marks and value balance. Try to think about the value balance. Input and output, and is it balanced or not? And negative <coughs> effect, is there any negative effect? Can you see any negative effect out of this diagram? And when you take a look at this, this diagram, you would find that this doctor only, this is the only stakeholder that pays for this, that pays for in, in this diagram. So he would say, my money just go out. I'm not gaining much. So why don't you have some other stakeholder to support this spending? Maybe insurance company could be another stakeholder to cover this expense. So by adding this insurance company as a new stakeholder, this flow could be added, and also the government is going to be another stakeholder to give permission for the insurance company to cover this. Okay? So this is the synthesis part. This one is the an analy analysis part. This is to analyze. Analyze. When you analyze and you find some insight findings, then you can synthesize the system. Okay? So, it's not easy, I know. <laughs> Your mind is so much right now. <laughs> Your brain is so used up and <laughs> Tired. I know this is the last work for today. So please discuss and create CDCA of your picked idea for the solution for new healthcare or life logging device or service. If, if it's not life logging, it's okay. And consider the values that are not only money and goods and services. <coughs> Who are the main stakeholders? Who are values for the stakeholders? How is the value chain changed? Visualize value chain so you can discuss, modify, and make it as a part of innovative solution. Okay? So, this one looks like. So, this one. Yes, a CDCA value chain, but it looks like supply chain. Right? This means that you can add more values, which are not the service, products, money, flow. So, this is one another example of this. But are not always. Values are not always tangible. They are often intangible. So this is an explanation about the intangible values. Okay?
Okay. Suppose that uh, dad went to Japan and he got a souvenir in Tokyo. Origa. Do you know origami? Yes. Yes? Yes. And these are pattern origami. We call it Ichirogami. Very beautiful pattern of origami. And he paid for this. And he got this product. So if this is supply chain, it's limited to this part. We agree? Yeah? But behind this, what makes that cause this action? Cause this behavior? If you think about the cause of this supply chain, there's some very important part behind this. That is going to, when he's done, when he's done, that is going to give the souvenir to mom. And mom will say, it's his wife. His wife will say, oh, so you went to Japan. And this kind of conversation is generating. And it's very important for these fathers, right? Especially in Japan, yes. And the mother would give the daughter this. And maybe she would make crane, origami, so they, they're going to make some forms out of this paper. Maybe this is the, the one she made. Mom would make crane and give it to daughter. And she would say, Mom, this is great. And this is another new communication. Degenerative. And this is another value for them. And also between dad and daughter, new communication is generated. Daughter would say, Daddy, what is yoga be? And he and daughter would have another conversation. So these values are very, very important. And these are the goals for this to happen. So try to find the, what's hidden. <laughs> behind this supply chain, there must be some intangible values flow between some other stakeholders. Okay? So including these intangible values, please discuss about the TPCA. Not only tangible, but also intangible values. Okay? So I give you um, 30 minutes. Okay, this is going to be the last part. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank
don't have much time left, so I make it 15 minutes, but you don't have to finish. You don't have to finish. You can continue tomorrow morning. So you don't have to finish. I'll give you 15 minutes. You go for the half day, okay? Oh, you're 
at this address by email. Okay? And among the people who submitted CVs, we will select three to six persons and we will interview to them in the afternoon of tomorrow. Okay? Understand? And last thing I would like to ask you is let's take a picture together outside. Okay? Group photo. Okay. So, how, how do I? Read? <coughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So, downstairs, there are stairs, staircases. So, we will take the, uh, the picture together. So, come and down to the first floor. Uh, in, intinya uh, untuk acara workshop yang hari kedua ini sudah harus bisa selesai uh, itu ada kuesioner sedikit disebar kuesioner saya mau diisi aja uh, sama jadi pesan tolong tulis nama sama email terserah di mana aja itu terus uh, nanti kalau meninggalkan ruangan nggak uh, apa-apa taruh aja di situ nggak uh, usah yang dihapus atau gimana yang penting jangan sampai ada barang ketinggalan nanti kalau udah selesai nanti kita barengan kita foto di bawah di tangga utama pintu masuk kita foto bareng ya soalnya takutnya besok ada yang nggak datang atau gimana jadi kita harus ada foto hari selanjutnya besok juga kita ada foto lagi terus menekankan lagi tadi apa yang diumumkan di depan intinya malam ini masih dibuka lagi untuk yang mau daftar apa untuk menjadi kandidat keo dan diingatkan kembali yang diisi nggak cuma eh, yang dikirim nggak cuma uh, yang uh, ada dua ya yang perlu dilakukan satu kirim CV kedua jangan lupa isi Google Formnya tapi untuk lebih detailnya untuk lebih pastinya nanti kita bakal blast lagi di email ada yang pertanyaan nggak ada ya oh ya gimana tahu bakal diinterviewnya oh, iya mengenai itu jadi uh, yeah. wait Ternyata mirip sama saya tahun lalu Jadi intinya gini Hari ini kan dinilai aktifannya dan sebagainya Besok pun akan dinilai dan yang akan sangat menentukan nanti adalah terutama dari CV dan Google Form yang diisi itu kan dari semua mengenai apa motivasi dan sebagainya nah itu bakal sebenarnya bakal lebih sangat menentukan itu nah nanti besok itu persis setelah selesai acara bakal diumumkan siapa tiga sampai enam kandidat yang lolos interview jadi tiga sampai enam kandidat ini nanti akan langsung diinterview bergantian untuk nah nanti untuk pemain pemenangnya karena mereka pun masih mengsortir yang dari Thailand, India, Malaysia mereka pengen mengumumkannya barengan jadi kurang lebih paling cepat dua minggu paling lambat satu bulan waktu zaman saya juga dulu kayak gitu pertanyaan yang menjadi sebelah ya gimana uh, waktu waktu itu udah permisi cuma apa kan ini ya apa kita udah dan saya itu tahu, tahu itu kita udah ke lima konten gimana ya ini ada reportnya mungkin bisa kirim pulang oke okay. paling nanti malam uh, kebetulan uh, baru di sharing yeah. sebelumnya kan sistem KEO KEO sistem SBM SBM karena Google Form yang dikirim buat kita registrasi untuk workshop ini sistem buat mereka yang registrasi ke depan nah nanti malam kita bakal announce deh siapa aja yang udah uh, official submit dan uh, sebenarnya kita hanya bisa mengumumkan siapa yang submit soalnya kita nggak tahu siapa yang belum dan mau Oke kita kenal saja. Jadi yang udah biar nggak usah dua kali ya. Intinya itu kan. Sip. Ada lagi pertanyaannya? Nggak ada. Aman. Ya kalau udah, kalau udah isi bahasa Indonesia nggak usah panjang-panjang, nggak usah masih kebo. Kita taruh aja di meja. Nggak apa-apa. Nanti biar saya sendiri. 
Oke, okay, terima kasih teman-teman buat waktunya. Uh, jangan lupa ada banyak ketinggalan. Kalaupun ketinggalan, insya Allah aman di sini. Uh, kita langsung kumpul di bawah buat foto bareng ya. Jangan kemana-mana. So, see you downstairs. Very soon. Di meja yang mana, kalau mau ngasih meja baru juga silahkan Oke, okay, sekali lagi Untuk yang kemarin mudah di meja tersebut dan bersama uh, orang-orang teman-teman sekitarnya yang lama Tolong bersama yang lama, karena kita mau continue yang kemarin Dan buat yang datang baru, nggak apa-apa uh, Kalau nggak mau langsung ke meja, cari yang meja ini jangan sampai lebih dari 5 orang Dan yang baru, kalau misalnya bikin meja baru juga silahkan nggak apa-apa Oke okay. Nah, terus pengumuman kedua ini penting juga, tolong simak e, Tolong yang sudah yang datang kemarin agar dipasang lagi nama yang tertempel di sini Pastikan di lingkaran merah untuk yang mau e, coba daftar ke KU Jepang Kemudian buat yang baru datang juga sama Tolong bikin e, apa label nama, taruh di e, baju yang jelas terlihat Kalau misalnya ingin e, coba buat kesempatan ke Keo, tolong dilingkari warna merah namanya nah, dan untuk yang daftar juga tolong dibikin labelnya jadi dua jadi bikin label satu lagi pakai nama lengkap ya khusus buat yang daftar mau ke Keo yang workshop lagi ke Keo Jepang ya kalau buat yang gak daftar cukup pakai kemarin atau kalau memang yang gak daftar cukup tulis uh, nick name aja Oke, okay, ada yang kurang jelas? Ada yang mau tanya? Jelas ya? So 
I would like to share with you the smart toilet. Smart toilet. Uh, so this toilet is kind of cool because uh, I got inspired by uh, yesterday uh, project about healthcare and life logging. <coughs> Usually the uh, people in Indonesia, especially if they, they would like to uh, check a uh, medical checkup, they go to the lab and then uh, they get the uh, urine test or others and then uh, also blood pressure and uh, blood sample. But I think uh, this smart toilet is something that you could do every day. So you could uh, daily monitor your health to detect your, your urine and the data from a human. And then the data is sent to the health uh, institution to analyze, and then also if you have some biolabs, you could also uh, monitor daily. For example, uh, you eat too much fat, you, get, you eat uh, less fiber, you eat less uh, water, you drink less water, something like that. And also, uh, this toilet, you use it as a, to detect cholesterol, diabetes, and pregnancy. So I think uh, this idea is quite unusual, but we are very good. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Which company makes this product? Uh, makes this product? Uh, I, I don't know which country is uh, 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 the... Kitchen market or Mexican? No. No, just, just uh, picking and oh, using it's, it's not something there, but if, if you, you think... Yes. It's going to be innovative if you have this product. So I think if, uh, if this product is well in Japan, I think... <laughs> because you get it from me. <laughs> yeah, I think. Is there that kind of product in Japan? I mean, Yeah, it's being found by uh, 
lots of people in Indonesia, lots of will be benefit. So in 2010, I got a knee surgery, and I got a knee surgery that forced me to stay in bed for six months. And at that time, I confused because I cannot go to work. That means I don't have any income to support my uh, daily expense. And after that, I tried to find out how I can survive. And at that time, uh, I found a book called The World is Flat. It's uh, by Thomas L. Friedman. It's, uh, it tells us about uh, that the world is going flat. So there is no round world again. What is the meaning of it? That all of us have an equal opportunity to play in the world. In that book, also being told the theory called crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing means we have an access to lots of talents in this world. So, Indonesian people can have access to talents in America, and American people can also have talents in Indonesia, in India, in Vietnam, in Bangladesh. And when I found that idea, I explored it in the internet, and I found a website that uh, facilitated that kind of interaction. One of the sites is Upwork. You can go there. So, in this site, people that need to build something or have a project can post it in Upwork. And people that can uh, that can uh, finish that project can bid to the project. So, like example, if people in US want to build a website, people in Indonesia can try to bid to build that website. Or people in France want to create a design, then people in Indonesia can bid on that work. So, why I think this is innovative idea? Because our uh, opportunity to access talents is not being boundaries by the geography. And Indonesia has an advantage of it. First of all, why? First of all, because of the living cost in Indonesia is different than living cost in America. So instead of people in America uh, hire a programmer that costs about $60 per hour, we in Indonesia can do the work by $20 per hour, or maybe $10 per hour, or maybe $5 per hour. Programmer. And the second uh, advantage is about this one. This is the hidden advantage, time zone. People in America finish their work at 5 p.m. And in Indonesia, it's morning time, so they can give their work to Indonesia. People in Indonesia in the morning time work until 5 p.m. in Indonesia. In America, it's already morning time, so they can see themselves like working 24 hours, while instead we in Indonesia are different place working. So we have an advantage of this, and this will change how we work. Usually, work is going to office, but now work just sitting in our home. So I think this is an innovative idea. And then, uh, in this side, we have lots of work on it. Uh, like example for programmer work, if you search on it, uh, there are about 30,000 works. And it's not only for programmer, but also for data entry for virtual assistant, for design, and for uh, business plan or marketing. So you can access many talents that you are uh, shortage to other people in other worlds. So if, uh, if you want to see more, you can press this side. Thank you very much.
this is an example that people uh, people profile. This is I I show you one of my profiles. So as a, as a safety, all people that working into a project will be recorded by the feedback and their rating. So people cannot just work and then uh, they hide or they they do cheating because uh, the system will lock everything. For example, I told uh, one of my friends, uh, how if people hire someone but they are not working? First of all, they lock about their time of work. So the logging is time. Every time that being uh, work is locked by the system. And the second one, how if people uh, lock the time, for example, they put start, and then uh, they do Facebook, or they browse social media sites. So they have a safety in random time, they will capture the screen of, of your computer. So if you do Facebooking, it will be captured. But how if the screen is source code? So you can put source code or you can put Adobe Photoshop and you, uh, you pretend that uh, you are working while you are watching TV. And this uh, system also record your activity in keyboard. So if there are no activity in keyboard, uh, the employer will think, why is this people is showing source code or showing Adobe Photoshop while there is no activity in keyboard? Yes, capture. Could you? Oh, anything? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so uh, this is a safe uh, system to do work remotely. And uh, I find it innovative because if lots of Indonesian people uh, know this, then we will have access and we will compete with people with other, uh, other countries. I also have uh, some clients too from Japanese, and uh, they're all good people. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. So, Is it possible to 
ada nggak orang yang mau tiap hari kerja di
Okay, who thinks that Honda is a prototype and Iron Man is final solution? Okay. Now who thinks that Honda is final solution and Iron Man is prototype? Okay. Who thinks both are prototype? Okay, who thinks both are final solution? So the answer is this. This is not what we say, but what they say. Honda says Unicup, this is called Unicup. Unicup is a prototype. It is a prototype. Unicup is a prototype of near future personal mobility product. It is currently validating its concept. Mobility that blends into human or human environment. So they have a question to ask for this product. They want to know if how this product is going to blend into the society, human society, human environment. So that's the question they want to ask by doing this product. And on the other hand, Iron Man suit is the final solution. This Iron Man suit, this Iron Man suit was designed and built to escape from the very prison. It serves the purpose, therefore it is the final solution. So at least it served its purpose. So that's the final solution. Okay, that's the difference. So what I want to say is this. Prototype is nothing about the movie. People would think that the prototype looks rough and the final solution looks neat. But it's not. Right? You can you can see from the example, right? So prototype is built to answer questions. And the, that question is important. Okay, so the prototype is something you create to get closer to your final solution. And the final solution is developed on findings and insights acquired from prototyping and testing. Once you have the question you want to ask for doing prototyping, and you get feedback from the prototyping. And then you using those feedbacks, you develop your product or service into the final solution. Right? So that's how you do the prototyping. And there are two types of questions prototype can answer. Uh, I'm going to talk about verification and validation. Is it familiar to you? Yes? Yes. What's the difference? Do you know the difference? Can someone explain the difference? Verification and validation. Verification is only uh, being done or, uh, I think verification is usually being done quantitatively. Quantitatively. And validation is usually being done qualitatively. So verification is usually by survey or uh, by something that quantitatively uh, shown or some idea. Validation is by interview, and uh, so we can get deeper, deeper understanding of the certain problem. Uh, might be wrong, but I think uh, verification is for the product itself. The validation uh, involves community that acceptance of the product. I think um, both of you have, uh, you know, there's no right answer, but for us, based on the systems engineering mindset, uh, we say this, verification is something to check if you are doing the things right. That means the 
you, if you are doing the things in the right way. That's the word ver verification. And validation is something to check if you are doing the right thing.
come back to this phase, right? But it is far more important to confirm you are doing, you are going to do the right thing in this constant phase. Because here, well, I, I just wrote uh, this diagram here. Can you see this? In the early phase, you have a lot of degree of freedom. You have, you don't use much cost, you don't, you don't, you know, use much money on this. In this phase, you are going to, you have, um, you're going to spend a lot of money here. Strategy and execution. But here, there's a lot of freedom. You just think, it's a concept phase. That's why you have a lot of freedom, so you put your effort here, doing the prototyping and in using innovative thinking. Okay, so it's far more important to confirm you are doing the right thing in this early phase of the product. And it is called early validation. So early validation mindset is a key for success. Okay? So concept phase validation. And I'm going to show some examples for the early validation. This is the early validation done by one of our uh, teams of the student for the design project. They want to uh, make a prototype for the wearable time telling device. They, their idea was to put some something on their finger, wearable, and for the time telling device. And they tried on several paper made fake nails. They they made in you know, a paper fake nail and then they put on them and they spent half a day you you know putting on them. And they realized that it didn't bother so much. You could they could spend half a day putting on these you know, paper fake nails. But they found that it bothers if you have all the thumbs. So this is the early validation. They wanted to know, their, their question was, could people spend days with wearing this? So they found that the, their answer was that it was okay, but not all the thumbs. Okay? So this kind of question, and you do the plan the prototype, and then you get the feedback, and then you refine your idea. And this is another example. This is, uh, have you ever seen this example? This is a kind of famous example from IDEO. IDEO is, you know, IDEO. IDEO is an American uh, consultant, design consultant in Japan. And uh, it's uh, one of the uh, very kind of father of design people. So um, their engineers were uh, talking about uh, a new surgical instrument with the doctors. They wanted to develop a new surgical instrument. And this prototype was built in the first meeting of the IDEO and the medical doctors. And they wanted to know how doctors are holding their instruments when they do the surgery. So the engineers made this using something around on the table. Like this, this is a clip, and this is a glue, and this one, I don't know, maybe they could find somewhere close to their table. And they, the engineers made this shape, and the doctors tried. So it helped to communicate the concept in very early days, and it didn't cost much, I mean, not, nothing. It costed nothing to make this prototype, but, it came as this product. This is a, a medical surgical, surgical instrument. And actually they got a price as a medical instrument. So they wanted to know how doctors hold the product, this kind of instrument. And they 
they well communicated and they developed this. So this is the, one of the examples. And this one is another one from also IEO. You know this? <laughs> Maybe. So this one is a new smartphone application for kids. IDEA wrote not a single line of program to prototype their smartphone application user interface. Very cost and time effective prototype. So I'm going to show you their prototype. And first, 
make a question. You're going to do some kind of prototype using any kind of method. But you want to know this. Because I want to, we want to know this, you're going to learn prototyping. And what you're going to prototype and how you're going to prototype. You're going to plan. Okay? So I want you to do this is this. You and your team are prototyping and testing your idea or insight. Tomorrow, tomorrow, there's no tomorrow for this workshop, but just suppose, just suppose you're going to do this prototyping tomorrow. So you, now you have to write an email to your team members about tomorrow's prototype, interesting plan. Where to meet, what to bring, what to build, how to test, what is expected, and any, any other questions you want to ask. So what is a good question to ask? And how can we conduct early validation? Think about this and plan for your prototype, early validation prototype. Okay? What do you expect to know out of the product? I give you, okay, first 20 minutes. Think about the question and then plan in the, in the form of something like you know, writing an email to your members. Okay, use another sheet of paper and discuss what you want to know. Okay, so 20 minutes. <laughs>
simulasi ini ya kita berenang bisa kumpul kalau oh, bawa sabun, kalau bawa lens, kalau bawa lampu kita bakal merangkai dan berat sebut kita mau prototyping ini loh jadi benar-benar tahu apa yang mau di prototype dan jangan lupa apa ini tiga value nya apa ini harus prototype ini
employment in some area. And then the value proposition uh, we offer is the quick seller of business deployment. So from the problem definition, we'll be aware that there are many virus in this world, for example, like a Zika virus, a lingua fever, or influenza, even influenza is also the virus. But we cannot we cannot know how where is the virus come from or where which which area uh, that that are deployed from the virus. So we find this kind of problem that we have to know uh, about the area that in in I said by the virus. This is the stakeholder we can think about. The first one is the people and the society itself, and then we. And then the other one is the mobile application is offered because we will use the mobile application. The third one is IT developer to provide the data, data, and doctor, hospital, and government. And this is the value chain. The first one, the IT developer, they will make the, they will provide the data mining. Data mining is from the social media that we use. So many people use the social media, they will update about the status of the, of the area and the condition of the area. And then, uh, they will provide this data and also from the hospital. The hospital also can know when, uh, this kind of person is, um, uh, this kind of, where this kind of person lives in, where, which kind of area that is already infected by the virus. And then they will provide the data and um, send it to the mobile application developer. And the mobile application developer will make an application in the smartphone for the people or the user. And the government will control all of all this process. The hospital, the doctor will be a preventive stakeholder uh, for this idea. Oh, yeah. Okay, and this is our prototype. So the first one, we will, for example, we choose the brother's fit. Uh, we will we choose we will meet at Braga Street at home because that's only the example. And then the second one, we will bring smartphone, maps, walk alarm, camera, paper, pen, and sticky notes. The third one, we will build the space of the application and synchronize it. So we will make kind of five video and then roll pay the video. So how we make it? For example, like the first person, they will uh, they are the person that who are not from the Braga area, but they but he or he want to go to the Braga area. Yeah, he or he want to go to the Braga area. And then let's say uh, he or he is a tourist. And they have the mobile application in their smartphone. And then when he enter the Braga area, uh, the alarm of the of the smartphone will ring, will ring and then inform the level of the harmless of the, of the area. There are three kinds of harmless we, we plan to make. The first one is the red one, green one, and uh, yellow one. The red one, the red one is the the, the most uh, yes. yeah, the most dangerous area, and then the green one is the less dangerous, and the the yellow one is means like it's not really dangerous, but you have to be careful and prevent about that uh, make a preventive action about the area. The second one, uh, okay, after the alarm ring, and the third person uh, ring. Uh, your mobile phone will show the area, the map of the area, and then show the show the level of the harmless itself, the red, yellow, and the green one. And the third one, uh, the the mobile application will give you about the information of the area. For example, like oh, this red area uh, is misinjected by the uh, by the Ebola Ebola virus, for example. So you have to be careful because the level of the harmless the red one, that kind of information, and the fourth, the fourth, uh, the fourth information that we, we have, the mobile application will give is um, there is information about the preventive way and the 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 preventive way. For example, how can you prevent to how can you prevent before you enter this uh, Braga area? For example, if there is a dangerous fever in that area, you have to use the the lotion before you get into the area. And then also there is some information about the nearest hospital. If you feel that, oh, you already got sick at that time, you can go to the nearest hospital to prevent this disease getting more, um, more and more disease. And then the big one and what we expect is we, will, we, we want people aware about the 
um, about the level of the dangerous in one area to prevent the virus, um, to prevent the person getting to the virus and become more sick and, 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 and yeah, that kind of uh, presentation you want to make. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. You have quite detailed <laughs> image of that. So you now you know uh, most of the solutions for the, this your value proposition. Right now, you have the very clear image of that of what you are going to provide. And now uh, for the prototyping, what is the question you want to ask? What do you want to know out of this? Prototyping. What is the question? The question is uh, how the uh, application uh, can, can provide the information for the people who use the uh, application. That's the question. So, is it verification or validation? What do you think? Okay, I'm going to explain about, uh, so our problem is how to measure uh, 
uh, South Park level. And we honestly, we are really born how to measure the South Park level honestly. Because when people are asked are they actually smart or not, they usually say that I'm okay, I'm fine. But they're actually facing the problem that they are stressed in life or they have another problem that they might don't want to share to their friends or family. And the value proposition is uh, how to know the current levels, um, current staff level through five activities. Maybe you, um, my friend can um, go deeply into Okay, so how we measure about the stress level? So we, we already discussed it and we found that we use games to measure stress level of people. So for this, for this case, we uh, our target market is the workers because workers usually have the highest stress level compared to another job, just like students or etc. So that's why our stakeholders here is workers, students, entertainment industry, and doctors. This these stakeholders. So from these stakeholders and this value, we we found that. The most important thing is about the relaxing time, social time, that means more fun activities for stress relieving. So, about the diagram itself, that means the application only provides the in interface. So, in the back, behind the screen. So, behind the screen, we have doctor and psychiatrist to. To, to do some extra adjustment. So that means the application itself cannot judge for more complicated situation. So the application will suggest about the, who you will see for advanced suggestion. So that means the application will... Uh, this is about the diagram and I can tell about the, how does it work. Then, the application only provides the user interface. The user itself will fill out some questions, and then the application will 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 result of of up some some results like oh your stress level is this level. You need this one. You need this one. Please contact to this one. Let me please contact to this one. You need some entertainment. You need some refreshing. You need some recording you need some vacation and then the application will suggest some uh, providers to do some stress relief and then the entertainment provider itself means travel agent community and how does this application gain money this is the most important thing in business right so that means this application for free to work out. but this application gets money from insurance company and entertainment provider. Why? Because the worker pay the entertainment provider and they also. This one more like about the government spending for insurance or something. So we not draw any any connection from workers to insurance company. So it's all is the and prototyping that we explain. For uh, prototyping, uh, uh, we will, our team will send a muscle uh, invite some people for joining the prototyping. We will meet in Sari Office building in maybe in Jakarta, Jakarta and uh, we will bring tablet and Android to so complementary view for the uh, uh, respondent for joining the survey and question. We will uh, we will maybe uh, bring some questionnaire from the uh, uh, for the respondent. The, the questionnaire is like template for our application. We will try we will ask them to fill the questionnaire and we will want to know how they feel after they fill in the questionnaire. It's uh, like uh, what to explain is if the application is attractive for them by the questionnaire, we will know if the questionnaire is attractive, if the application is attractive, 
And do you think that the, the application reduce your stress or the suggestion is reduce your stress? And is the user thinking the application is simple or content or how to maybe they can give some suggestions about how to improve the apps and uh, is it the the app really encourage user to give an honest answer because from our value proposition we, we need to know that we want uh, the workers um, will honestly fill the application. Uh, is the question easy to understand and what the user expect after using the app and the the, more, the most important is will the workers use the app in everyday basis? This is uh, both the question. I think the uh, most important part from the very position is we came across uh, it from the inside that the live login has two uh, input, uh, manual input or uh, automatic input. So the automatic input can apply uh, to the device. Uh, but uh, the manual input, uh, such as water balance or have you have running today, is tend to uh, make people, uh, the, ex, the application judging the people. So, uh, sometimes the user try to cheat the app and have uh, uh, counterproductive uh, input to the app. So why we use uh, the word honestly in the uh, uh, problem definition? So we, instead of directly asking the user, we come around with fun ways to measure what they really need to know. Any question? <laughs> <laughs> any question from others? Any, sometimes. <laughs> you have any question? No? So, this one, you made uh, the project for validation. validation. So, the question you want to ask is Is the app really useful for them? Or, and does it actually work to give up the honest answer about? Um, what you expect from the user also because user usually you know it's um, it's kind of a counter productive um, work if the user actually give the user input the, the right thing about yeah. how they actually feel it's not about how they think they feel it's more about like what they actually feel but to do that actually you have to slightly cover up the truth so the the user doesn't really know that they're actually giving their an answer. So you, you are answer. trying to know what they want as the uh, as a service, but yes. how, what's the point you um, input the right data? Right. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I understand. I understand. Okay. Thank you very much. This is a uh, one of the validation questions. So how how they want to know the service is going to be another prototype. But before that, you want to know they if they really um, they don't they don't cheat yeah. <laughs> the data they want to yeah. input, right? Okay, how do they do? How do how can people how can you make people do that? Right? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. It was very good. Okay, I like both of you. But this one is for verification, and this one is about validation. So. Try to um, know the difference, okay? Um, so, very sorry, I don't have time. So,
He's going to do the presentation for his own prototyping and testing. <laughs>
if you're questioning about, so what did I learn during my workshop three months in KU? I make it in the red color. So the first one you need to know is about the market ability. First thing you you really really need to know is when you want to sell a product or when you want to sell a service, you need to know how many users or how many consumers do you think that they might want to buy your product or your service. And that's came from the target market segment and especially market size. When you want to sell your product, let's start in our local city, let's say Batu. How many population and how about gender? How about demography and etc. That's the first thing you need to know. And the second one, the one that we already tried to conduct is the value proposition. And how to measure this value proposition? It can be a user experience or user case. The one that we did by like typing is the uh, one method to measure the uh, prototyping to make the value proposition to answer prototyping. But let me tell you something, one interesting that I learned from the workshop. If you lucky enough to be selected, actually there's another method you uh, will uh, have the experience to learn. It's called journey map. Have you ever noticed the words of journey map? Anyone of you? Journey map? Yeah. What do you think? I mean, like, have you ever done that kind of journey map? Uh, uh, not on YouTube. Oh, only on YouTube. Yeah. So, please learn about journey map. It's really, really useful. I mean, like, if you, if you are a startup company, you should start your product or your service from the journey map. Because let me tell you one secret: a good product is not answering. What do you want to produce? But a good product is you know what people need. That's the start value from your products or service. So this journey map is something new for me at the time. And now I really into it. I really like to use this kind of journey map. Because from this journey map, I could harvest many, many value propositions. And then don't forget about your competitiveness. You need to be aware about your competitors. And don't forget, entry barriers is the most important thing, especially if you're a startup company. So if you're trying to make an application, make sure. Uh, another uh, hint for you, don't forget, if you are a start, if you want to build a startup company that produces uh, service or product, Please, any amazing idea you have, don't forget. Google it first. You need to Google, really. During my three months of workshop, our member had like brainstorming like one hour at least, or maybe like two, three hours, five hours maybe. And then, not until we ended up by, hey, try to Google, is there any kind of similar application or similar product like us and then when we try to google ta -da! <laughs> it's not tada also so yeah our idea is already exist so don't forget <laughs> the main important issue is always google your idea make sure it doesn't exist that's the first way to make sure that your idea is original or your idea is new. And the last one is, yeah, obviously, profitability. And this part is something that us, as the school at business management, really, really smart. So let's prove it that we are the student of school and uh, business and management school, and we really like to count this kind of profitability. And yeah, I already share you the samples and actually I'm trying to do the prototyping now. So 
Can anyone of you guess what I'm doing right now? Is it verification or validation? Validation, verification. Both agree it's verification. One, two, three, four, five, something. Validation? Yeah, a bit equal, but yeah, the right answer is actually validation. But the right answer is actually letter validation. We've done the R&D, but still, we doesn't have the confidence to Is it the right way? Is it the right thing? Remember, to answer the validation and the verification is doing the right thing in the right way. Doing the right thing in the right way. You know the end of the process, and you definitely need to make sure how the process is done. So, whether you have done the process good, which means like me right now doing the R&D in the right way, but then it's not answering. Is this the right thing? Is this the right product? Is this the right apple chips I want to product? I want to produce. Still, it's not answering that kind of equation. So now, what I'm doing now is trying to figure out another value. I'm, I need to make sure, is this the right thing I will produce? Because right now, I'm very confident that I'm doing the right way. But still, I don't have that kind of confidence. Is this the, the right thing? So that's kind of thing. So this is my prototyping. As you may see in the questionnaire, actually I want to make sure the characteristics of the uh, of the chips about the shape, about the feel, about the taste. Those three important things that I need to explore. So, mm, to wrap up my presentation, actually remember this prototyping is not only one. So maybe after I done this prototyping, there might be the second one, there might be the third one. And that's what we call iteration. Remember, to make a good and perfect product, you need a lot, lot more like iteration. More frequently you done that iteration, uh, the less you will have that kind of failure, trust me. And yeah, so uh, so this the, the motto I got from the workshop is simple, and it's written on the wall, right? Doing the right thing in the right way. That's the motto. So okay, I think that's enough for my presentation. Um, please do some uh, filling in my question and thank you. that he learns a lot and I'm sure that he's going to do this workshop without us. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for this prototype part. Okay, so uh, these are the prototypes. You please try this and fill the, this form for him. Okay, so he says that this is the validation. This is the validation, but not the very, very early phase of validation, maybe a middle phase. Because if it's, because they have this product already, right? So without this kind of product, maybe early concept phase, that would be uh, early validation, but middle phase validation, yeah, okay. But still, as he said, it's going to be another so many times, but uh, prototyping to get feedback and make it refined. Okay, that's the purpose for the prototype. Okay, so I forgot to uh, say something. Yeah. So there is uh, actually another super sensei in Japan uh, to uh, to uh, to, to be this and coming. Uh, so his name is Kanidori Sensei, and you see, I always be, uh, remember what he mentioned about like 
So, you want to know whether your product or service is good or will be accepted or not. So, let me tell you something. The exact words that he mentioned to me. You will never ever know knew that your product or your service is good not until the market responds, which means you already distribute, you are already selling the product. Yeah. So that's kind of sentence. It's always inside my hand. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. What he just mentioned is something to do with this. This is something we uh, and I and I told um, because you asked the question about the innovation and invention, right? And how? What, what is the difference between the innovation and innovative, and how how it you know proceed uh, improve into the innovation? We we thought that. Okay, so the turning opportunity into new idea and what you use practice. This is the definition of the innovation that Makoto Sensei has explained yesterday morning, right? So this one, turning opportunity into new idea is what you can do using this innovative thinking that you have just learned. This is something you can do. And why do you use practice? This one, has to do with the market, right? So what you can do, what you can control is here. This is the big thing. Turning into opportunity, opportunity into new ideas, something you do. And part of the marketing and strategies, these are something you can do also, controllable elements here. But why do you use practice? It's something the market decides, the users decide. So, like he said, this is the, the early phase. Early phase, you have a lot of freedom for the concept, thinking about the concept, and you don't you don't need to cost, you don't need to pay a lot of money for this project. But as the Project proceeds, this is a timeline. You have less and less freedom. So if you want to do the product, you have very limited freedom. So it's much better to put your effort in this phase, early phase. That's why we keep saying that concept phase is important. So innovative thinking should be put into this phase. And this is the cause, and the effect is innovation. Okay, so that's what he just explained that you don't know if this is the innovation because it's decided by the market. That's the idea. Okay, so that's all for all the presentation and workshops for today. Thank you very much for your support. So please don't forget that you just learned these four method and techniques, but the insight, getting insight counts. Getting insight is the purpose of the doing this kind of work. Okay, so now it's time to announce about the interview. Okay, <laughs> downstairs. And Can go back. And Ella. 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 Okay. Did you enjoy the workshop today? Okay, thank you very much. So before closing today's workshop, so I would like to give Ella, the official certificate on completion of our KOH program. So, welcome to here. And uh, this is to certify that on 6th day of December 2015, Mr. Elbanga, during completing KOH University 
Edge Program 
because you you have certain structures of what you have thought about ideas. So the CCTA and uh, two by two metric is derived from system thing. Is that correct? Part of it. So it's a mixture. Then it's not the system thinking. This is the design thinking, but it's a mixture. So we, I don't know if they, uh, you know, this school uh, intentionally talk about the system thinking, but we intentionally blend system thinking into this kind of innovative workshop. Because we are background with system. We have a, a very a foundational uh, background as systems engineer. SDM is based on system engineering. System engineering is something you is, is a methodology to build the right system, even if it's a very complicated, having the multiple stakeholders, multiple disciplines. It's very, very uh, difficult to get together the old system we need to integrate it into one system. Right? So, the system is engineering a way of thinking to think everything, everything as a system, whole system, to make it a good system. So, that's the basic you know, uh, background of us. That's why we intentionally put those elements into this kind of work. So that's the difference, I guess. So, of course, the D school is the you know, kind of father of design thinking, so it's the original. You, you should learn the original one because it's good. It's good. We actually follow them to, we actually take a look at their website and, uh, you know, if they change if they, they have made some changes in their methodology, we follow and how they, you know, uh, we, we try to, you know, update our, our uh, uh, knowledge about it. It's such a precious two days here. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's very, very nice. To but one more thing is that it does, I wish that for the next year, if it could be very, very possible, is that we have pretty much longer time to have those kind of things like this here. The <laughs> so just here. But yeah, the workshops are pretty much longer. Uh, and another thing is like, uh, we get a lot of information for, for all, from all of the side, but one thing that I do afraid is that it could be forgotten or be missed. So can we have, or you, can, you, can you share your slide for us? Uh, sure. So either we are visit the Japan or not, but we, we still can do the research, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Of yeah. course, we're going to share our slides. Mm. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, Thank yesterday you, and today, too. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to scan this um, afterwards with your URL and the date they will just uh, spread them. Okay, yeah. sure. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I have a question about, uh, so what we do uh, in these two days, yes, I believe it's like uh, the early phase from the product design uh, launch to the market. What I want to ask is the, the later part, I mean, what comes after the prototype, then uh, I should we have to pitch them to the venture capitals if we don't have any funds. Uh, and what I want to ask is, uh, what is usually the, the, the state for the inventor uh, themselves? Uh, like, how do they, uh, in Japan, how do they protect the intellectual properties because it's uh, quite sensitive uh, issues? And, uh, like, how many percent, like, you usually uh, they uh, uh, when it's going to be a company? That how many percent does the inventor in themselves have in, uh, in form of shares or of stocks? Like how many percent typically? Just for the idea, for the concept, for for the ownership of the company, should the company just happens to be. If you are involved in this project, uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, what's the incentive for the investor themselves in compared to the uh, venture capitals? Because if I were the venture capitals, I just uh, want to, uh, I, I can really, like, if I have insights to this kind of uh, uh, incubators, I can, like, just steal their ideas and develop it on my own. Uh, the investors just uh, no longer be needed. Uh, how do you protect that in, 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 in the terms of uh, the impactor perspective?
So, six candidates, please come to me. And uh, I would like to tell you when to start the interview and where the interview will be held. Please come to me. Yes? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.